Yo, I want to chill right now. <laughs> You're disrespecting me in a public forum right now. You realize that? Yeah. Okay. That to be the goal of the podcast for somebody to let go of their worries in the world and listen to us. This is my new look, Daddy David. <laughs> da- da- Daddy David. Born to procreate. Born to procreate. Yeah, that, that better make it in the intro. <laughs> nah, probably not. Hey, beautiful people. Welcome to episode 88 of the Unboxing Life Podcast. We are going to be delivering to you one hell of a banger. It is the long-awaited Drake versus Kanye. I say versus uh, lightheartedly, but we're going to be taking a look at Kanye West's Donda and Mr. Aubrey Drake Graham's Certified Lover Boy today. So there's bound to be some uh, some comparisons, some hot, hot, bleh, hot takes. Sorry, excuse me. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> I am joined by Seven Amo in the Brutal oh. Path. What is going on, brethren? I'm ready to talk about these albums. Absolutely, yeah. We this these albums have been out for like three weeks now, so I'm I'm very excited to talk about them as well. Mm. I'm also joined by uh, Dreezy, Mr. Drake, right. and, and Kanye himself. Yeah, then their names combined, not the singer who's also just named Dreezy, but <laughs> Drizzy and Yeezy. Okay. What's up, everybody? I love it. Okay. <laughs> and I'm also joined by Suyu Asui. A little bit of a branch off of uh, what you made your name, um, the, the TSU track on Certified. Um, Frog Hero Sue in, yep. in the mix. Yep. I, it, just, it just hit me. <laughs> and yeah. I am Treasure State University, one of the worst tracks on the album by far. <laughs> <laughs> so with, with that out of the way, let's get to some traditions, baby. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go last. Because okay. I, I would like to go last. I'm mm-hmm. selfish. Do so, it. let's do let's do the joke. I need I need to hear a joke. All right. Well, well, I mean, it was it's kind of interesting, right? Because because originally I forgot like getting on, I forgot the name of Kanye's album, but then it dawned on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was dope. Honestly. <laughs> Did you, I, I'm assuming you came up with that. No, I wish I did. Oh, uh, you fucked me. You could have lied know. to me and told me it was all right. I I saw <laughs> the uh, the Donda this, Donda that, Donda star the album like that. Donda that joke, star like, the good album a billion times. <laughs> Donda star the good album. Um, the good album. Ooh, double entendre. Don't even ask me how. <laughs> Dang, it's on good true. music. I'm really sorry. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> It's good. Nice. It's good stuff. Well, there it is. I like the I like the joke. All right. Dope. Well, we said that we were going to be playing the tracks on this podcast, or we were going to try to, but we're not going to, I guess. We so talked David, about it. Whatever. We did. We did talk about it, but I we mean, haven't really ironed it out. I so. can. I can edit through. We might get ripped off the freaking internet for this one. Who knows? It's uh because it's unofficially released. It's uh "Life of the Party" by Kanye West and Andre Three Thousand. Um, if you don't know Drake dropped this as part of their beef i guess because he he got it and he leaked it and then kanye is like directly dissing drake like saying his name on it but the overall track as it stands there's a lot more depth to it it's, it's a couple of really great verses especially andre's verses Ooh, we need a album from him in 2021 um, yeah good luck with that that's like getting a lauren or a lauren hill album yeah it really is well she dropped a great verses here too so maybe she did man she <laughs> killed that shit I know, yeah, but check it out for sure. It's like a, it's a missing piece of this puzzle, if you will. If you haven't heard it, it's pretty great, and I wish it was on the album. But I guess there was too many words to censor or whatever, because that's a thing. We'll get talking. into that too. That's a whole another talking point, actually. Yeah, so check it out. Life of the party. Life of the party. Yep. And Andre kind of talks about his uh, his mom passing on that verse, right? Yeah, it's really. Uh, it goes in depth, like talking about Donda, of course, and his mom, you know, both being up there and that kind of stuff. It's it's a really heartfelt, great verse. Yeah. Do you uh, do you find anything wrong with Kanye using that as an opportunity to go at Drake on that particular song? I mean, it's weird. I wouldn't say it's wrong, but Kanye kind of just has a, a verse where he goes. He talks about a bunch of stuff. He talks about I got the red hat on. Drake isn't as gangster as me, you know. 
some stuff about his mom maybe and then like i don't know it's just kind of kind of just is scatterbrained sometimes on his verses nowadays so I, I feel like for that particular matter especially considering andre doesn't drop a verse very often it's like once a year that we get a andre 3000 verse yeah so for him to be talking about such a incredibly personal message for him mm-hmm. to go at you know this stupid petty ass beef that just needs to end for all all parties sake yeah i think it's a little childish yeah it, it probably takes away from the track because maybe it could have dropped as like this really you know great emotional resonant track without this distraction in it but he would have got a lot of love for that yeah but oh yeah. well that's mm-hmm. some tangent beside I'm, I'm glad we can nerd out a little bit yeah all right mr cam mr froggy himself staying froggy in them sheets that's me dude <laughs> Shout out um, to his girl. She's fire. Ribbit, ribbit. Kiddo. Um, but yeah, so to rip us entirely away from any sort of concurrent theme, um, well, I guess you know, I, I know Drake has at some point has rapped about dead presidents. So this is about a president. So as, oh, okay. as, as much of a shoehorned segue as that is, here we go. Um, President Nixon ordered the Secret Service guarding the White House to have fancy uniforms similar to what palace guards wear in other countries. Revealed in 1970, almost almost no one liked the new new uniforms, including the U.S. Secret Service. The uniforms were eventually sold to an Iowa marching band. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, tried and failed to make the, uh, the White House more of a European palace. Dang, I, was trying des- I was trying desperately to like have mm-hmm. some sort of connection between that and the oh. albums. Yeah, the Iowa no, marching band was sampled. sampled? None. The Iowa marching band may have been sampled. I'm sure oh, okay. there's there's horns somewhere That's... on one of these albums somewhere, right? <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> maybe <laughs> on, in- <laughs> on a completely different album. Yeah, <laughs> but it is in someone has the used horns of music. in music yeah. before, right? Yeah, yeah I, I think true. I think horns are pretty uh cool, cool, pretty cool, popular cool, cool. instrument. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes Don't... it gets horny. Yeah. All right, hey, hey. and there goes our uh, monetization. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get demonetized. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Alex. You know I. You know I'm late on rent this week, dude. What the? F- <laughs> oh damn. Oh, man. We need this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cash app in the description. Cash. Yeah. For, for camera. Sure. We know. pay to do this podcast. Go we fund me. Pay for it. That's facts. That's facts. Just saying. That's big facts. We out here struggling. It's all good. (laughs) Your boy David landed a job though, so he's gonna carry us. There you go. Dreezy, Dreezy, Dreezy just jumped over jump man. (laughs) Dang. Nice. Maybe I'm gonna skip over that one. We've we've been here too long. (laughs) We've been here far too long. Yes. Finish the traditions. Okay, so I'm gonna quote track two on Certified Lover Boy. It is called Poppy's mm. Home. This is one of my favorite parts of the album, honestly. He's See, so Poppy. dude, he's so petty and disrespectful in this track. It's amazing. But it, it starts out with him going, Yeah. It's all my sons worldwide. All my juniors. I apologize for my absence. I know I left you without an annual drop. I don't know how I expected you to get your cloud up or you get your money up, but don't worry. The unboxing life is home. <laughs> Turn me up. It, it always Ew. throws me off when you adapt it for us. I never expect it. But <laughs> it's always welcome. Well, True. I figured that was like the most uh, fitting quote considering we haven't been recording in a, a, a very... Uh, yeah. We yeah. Our scheduling has just been very off. Yeah, it's so. been black. Yeah. All yeah. Them. Mm-hmm. But That's we're here. I do like, we're here. The unboxing life is home. I do like that mm-hmm. the word you substituted for us is daddy. Um, so, All right. So, yeah. Hey man, to all our juniors. It's pretty good. Shout out to y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> even even y'all are, that are doing like a million a week, and we're only doing forty an episode. Fuck y'all, man. I mean, we're home. We inspire them sometimes. The <laughs> oh, we inspire the greatest. Yeah. No, they, 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 look they, look up. they yeah. they wouldn't be where they were without us. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's yeah. facts. All right. Yeah. Well, let's, let's all be honest with us. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. we got the tradition squared away. I will say though, I do based off what I've seen on the internet, I do think this episode is going to require some type of disclaimer so uh, there's a certain a certain type of people out there that are very toxic we're going to be sharing our opinions you don't have to agree with them but take the toxicity elsewhere 
Let us know why we're wrong and put it in the comment for us. But they will. Yep, They'll say they will. Drake released the same album every year. They absolutely, they absolutely will. But I'm just letting y'all know you're gonna be roasted if you come at us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like homie that came at us in the in the short, bro. <laughs> That was, so that, that was so whacked. <laughs> you was doing, homie? Yeah. Call us beta males. <laughs> We're listening to music. Fun with the podcast. You just sitting there salty. Uh, why? Yeah. Why would four guys listen to an album put up by a female? What? Hello? Like? Yeah. Wh- what are you One actually even talking about? Females ever? Oh my goodness! You don't have to. Yeah. He he already told us he doesn't talk to women at at all. Yeah. He, mm-hmm. at Not even a little bit, dude. He does prefer to rain, remain anonymous, though. So. Yeah, that's facts. Yeah. Jay yeah, right. came with the haymaker, too. <laughs> so funny. Yo, shout out to Jay. Yeah, shout out. Uh, all right. So, yeah, thank you for the disclaimer. Yep. We're, we're going to get into some spicy hot takes. I, right. I assume. I think Probably. I will. Sure. Where do we want to start? Do we want to be insane and say which album we liked better to, to start the album, to start the Ooh. podcast? I don't we think, can. I don't we, know if we there's should, a, there's a lot of talking points. There's a lot of shit to get to. This might be a long out our episode. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be a, we're gonna be mm-hmm. very back and forth. I don't think there's gonna be a terrible amount of structure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and <laughs> I don't think be... that it, at least considering we're t- we're tackling two albums that are both 90 minutes plus. Yeah. I don't think we can. I don't think we're going to go through every track. It'll yeah. certainly touch on our favorites and you know the the talking points of or the major talking points of them, but. For the most part, we can't go through like we normally do for these music boxes. Yeah. In a year, we're going to end up looking back at this episode like we currently look back at the episode where Mobbing with Hove, where we reviewed two Jay Z <laughs> albums and an anime yep. in the same, and a two season anime in the same episode. At least that we're was not Dude, I don't think we've <laughs> been on wax saying that that is fucking ridiculous. I don't <laughs> think we've said that like on air. I feel like we did. That was. Well, we have. We have. Yeah. Yeah. This one will make a little more sense. Anniversary. So. This one makes a little more sense, yeah. Yes, it yeah. definitely this, makes. This more one sense. makes plenty of sense, um, especially you compared to that. It's not making dollars, yeah. though. But <laughs> okay, all right, DJ. Yeah, quick. because you got us demonetized, Alex. Thank <laughs> you so very much, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking killing Yo, me. Sh- Tying back, I love it. <laughs> yeah, and we're already having a good time. It's a show. Um, this is entertainment. We're content creators. Let's mm-hmm. do this shit. Come on. Absolutely, man. <laughs> well. I think we should start with releases. I think okay. there's a there's a timeline that we should we should stick to. So Miss uh or Miss Mr. Kanye oh, dropped man. his album what? August 29th. That was on a Sunday. It was mm-hmm. a, I woke up to it. It was like 10 a.m. and I'm looking at my phone and I see Twitter blowing the fuck up and I look on there and is and I keep getting these recommended tweets of this guy that changes his name to different Kanye statuses. Like did life yeah. of the party drop? Did Donda yeah. deluxe drop? And I saw, he said Donda dropped and I kept clicking on it. I click on it. Like every, the past like two weeks before it dropped, I kept clicking on it and I kept getting no results and it finally happened. And there it is black. Yeah. All I see is a black artwork and I'm like, all right, what is happening? What is this? We we thought it was like when when we upload to YouTube and the it's just the file name that I put up, so it's like episode yeah, eighty four video. final video or whatever. And like we <laughs> forgot to actually put the thumbnail and the actual like trimmings on the thing, or like didn't yeah. get to it in time. And so that we're we're like, yo, did they just like not put the artwork? <laughs> um, but we yeah. have different interpretations. We've been talking about throughout the week about different yeah. different people having different takes, which I'm sure you'll jump yeah. right back into. And yeah, I, with the I, whole, what? Now with the whole black, the whole black cover art for me was a little bit more uh, discombobulated because, like, I seen it drop at midnight, and now I'm like, "Holy shit, Donda drop!" Let me oh, like so it drop at midnight. All right, I don't know. It, it, for me, it was like twelve thirty when I realized. So I don't okay. know exactly, but I'm like, I seen it like it dropped, and I'm like scrolling through my phone mad quick, like I'm trying to get like a Halo Xbox or a PS Five, whatever. <laughs> And I'm I'm opening Spotify. Yeah, I and I'm like, all I see is black, black, black. I'm like, this shit is not loading. This shit is not loading. I gotta hear it. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> and that's how it was and for David like, and I. Wait, I was scratching my head, like, huh? Yeah, that's, that's how it was funny. for David and I when we yeah. when we first were gonna listen to Certified Lover Boy, and it was it was on that Thursday. It was like twelve o'clock at night, right as it, and I I called it like a half hour before. I'm like, Spotify is gonna crash. We're not gonna be able to get into it for like a half hour, and it did. It crashed for like an hour for me. And it didn't even drop at midnight. It dropped at like 1 a.m. 
and All we're right. like what the fuck and he's, he said it was gonna be two so we, w- we were like playing games till about like 150 and then we realized it already had dropped at one it was like bruh way to <laughs> like, waste they're just time. playing with us at that so point it was ridiculous yeah. weird yeah but anyway yeah i guess um the cover arts we can talk about i guess the meaning floating online was like donda was black for mourning of his mother and you know which sense. I totally respect, and if that is the true artistic vision, but considering this album was like eighty five percent not even about her, I just yeah. I don't I don't really get the tie honestly. If I'm being completely honest with you, it's an interesting aspect of the album. Yeah, not there's only a few songs that seem really focused on that, and then yeah, mm-hmm. the, uh, she's it's on the weird. album like her voice, but she is yeah. she's a whole song. Yeah, maybe it's like she inspired the themes on here yeah, or something like that. that that's I what know. I would go with is that he uh, he relates her to his godliness or something like that. His sense of religion and, and holiness um, mm-hmm. would be my, you know, guess at it. Um, yeah. Excuse me if so, that came through. Yeah. <laughs> no, if, if we want to assume it actually, like, should mean something, you know. Otherwise, yeah, it you should. Can, you, I think every sometimes, artwork means something. Sometimes you can just, like put that name on there and be like, this is a tribute to this person. Even if like, you know, like the foreword at the beginning of a book, the dedication or ra- rather where you're like for my mother or for my lovely daughters or something like that at the beginning of a book. Um, yeah. It can be kind of something like that where it doesn't have to be, you know, all about the person, but it's dedicated to her. Um, True. Yeah. So either way, it doesn't, it doesn't really, you know, I don't think that hard about it. Yeah. Um, do we think there's a deeper meaning behind the certified lover boy cover? Not <laughs> entirely. And I, we were talking about this like, like last excited. week. Uh, I, I, I think he just, you know, he went with the complete absurdity. The title of the album was already ridiculous as yeah. it was. Mm-hmm. So for him to have 12 pregnant emojis of different <laughs> skin colors and different backgrounds was yeah. just the icing on the cake. Like you, what else? What would you want the certified lover boy artwork to be if not that? You know, I don't know. Oh, no. I personally, I found enjoyment in it. Like after I saw it, and I'm like, <laughs> after like a half hour, because I was salty when I first saw it. I, I firmly thought that he was gonna actually have, <laughs> you know, like a legitimate artwork. Yeah. And it didn't you happen. wanted, you wanted like take care artwork. Something like that. Something with him. Like because I've his seen face. like. He, yeah, like anything with his face. Like if you look at his IG, he had a bunch of different like fan arts that were sent to him and he kept reposting them. And What's there was it? one where he had like a rose in his mouth. Uh, that would have been cool as shit. Yeah, I was yeah, just yeah, thinking true. that could be a good cover for it because he has the heart cut into his head, like or into his hair for it. So right. like, yeah, that true. would make sense to right. me. Mm, yeah. I would like that better because the, the yeah. complaint I was talking about with these guys in the chat was like, it just so doesn't fit certain songs that like I, I it's so like, it's just a, a weird disconnect for me. But and I, and also knife, I talk. It, knife talk, yeah. Some of like braggadocious <laughs> stuff where he's trying to go hard, and it's like pregnant emojis, and it's just ugly as heck. Like, I'm not a fan, but I'm I'm more a bigger fan of the Donda cover, honestly. But interesting, I I am personally not. I wish yeah. that there was something with Donda, but yeah. Oh well, I'm can't not have everything either. So it's what it can't is. have everything. Yeah. Um, well. We can talk about the sales. The um, Certified Lover Boy did basically double Donda's sales. And granted, Kanye cut two days out of his um, first week sales, if you will, um, mm-hmm. the way that Billboard and SoundScan like, counts them. So we only had five days to register sales versus uh, Drake 7. Yeah. And I think Donda did like 304, and Drake did just over 600, mm. which is a feat for both of them because I think that was Kanye's best selling album since the life of Pablo. Hmm. If I remember correctly. Yeah. The hype was built for sure. I think Drake just stays having more of a constant broad international, mm-hmm. like he, just, he caters to everyone. He caters to everyone. Yeah. Kind of a thing where Kanye is becoming more of a, more of a fringe, like cult type following where like, mm-hmm he has more super fans who believe that his music is like the epitome of art and stuff like that, where it's not mm, like, just facts. it's not just like poppy enjoyment and stuff like that. Like there are, you'll find quite a few people who will tell you like, will die on the hill that Drake is the greatest to ever do it. And like that no one else is him. Um, and I think he's a great rapper and everything, but it, obviously there is no reason to be that, that, that like insane about it where you're going to like murder people. I know, Trevor. It's like you're you're close, but you're not like what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. That's fact. No, that's fact. That's fact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But I am, so, I am a level-headed Drake stand. Yes, you're a level-headed Drake stand. You're not like yeah. gonna tell me. Well, maybe I take that back. I was gonna say you're not gonna tell me to die because I don't like a Drake track, but you might. So, <laughs> but mind. CSU, you're fine, man. Okay, yeah, <laughs> CSU, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm out of here. That's what I'm saying. But like, there, are, some yeah. like I've seen, I've seen so many people, and like, just we, you were talking earlier about like the Kanye accounts that changed their name to like has whatever dropped yet and stuff like that. We're like. I looked up Donda news like one time on Twitter and then for the next like two weeks, like after Donda drops, right? Exactly. I was getting notifications from Twitter that I did not sign up for about like random, (laughs) like Donda deluxe, Donda, like all this, that and the other thing news. And it's like, this guy is dedicating like so much of his day to tweet out bullshit that just like doesn't actually exist. And is like rumor and hearsay from some fringe ass website. And it and it gets Twitter. and it gets like several thousand likes. So there are oh, people yeah. there are people like directly in his mm-hmm. same vein of thinking that are egging on the entire insanity of, of the of the cult following. I mean, it's it's great to be in that invested in something. It's cool to care about something and be part of a community. I just Absolutely. don't I just don't see it for for that. Um, yeah, well, but no, I agree. It doesn't help that I mean he kept teasing this album like yeah 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 and then never came three didn't come out. tours with it like not tours but he did three stadium yeah. nights yeah but right. the the Old central venues, the central him playing the track or the the album and him just dancing along to it yeah mm-hmm. the the final point being like, like eleven million all of that all of that like super intense fandom makes a really like exclusive kind of community where it's like hard to like. Like mm-hmm. the the kind of gatekeepy shit where it's like, oh, you think new Kanye is trash? You're not a real Kanye fan, like stuff like that. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. So it's 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 more of an intense community on the on the Kanye side, I think, than it is the Drake side. Drake is very easy to like hop on and off the bandwagon, as it were. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, mm-hmm. uh, dude, I I went through. I was man, I was on the front lines of those comment sections, like during you know the first <laughs> week you. or so. I don't know why you do that to yourself, bro. Like I I do because you've explained it, but like I don't. Like I can't. Just I just like to. I like to stay in touch with, not stay in touch, but I just like to see how people are really feeling about albums and like. Yeah. You know, if you give someone an online presence, they're gonna say whatever the fuck they want because they have no repercussions. You know, so Mm -hmm. they're just gonna like overblow everything. Even if these albums were completely phenomenal and everything that we wanted, it would still be yo Donda is so much better than CLB. Like CLB could literally be the next Thriller. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, Donda better. Donda eight fucking greater than Signs. CLB. You know, that's like that's the entire comment section. Well, if Donda was the next Thriller. It would be better. <laughs> it would be, but it is not, unfortunately. It's not. It, it is not. It did not. We yes. got an over bloated album from both. I agree. I'll be fair. I'll yeah. be fair. Both are way too bloated for me. I'm gonna way be too many misses on both albums, I would say. To for either of them to be great. So individually, which one did we like better? I can I can start off. I'm certified lover boy better. Yes. C L B is hands down, heads and feet. Whatever the fuck you want to, how, however you want to say it, is the complete better album. Not I even was, close. I knew I was going to be on an island here. I think Donna is better. Donna better, personally. Good. I'm going head, shoulders, knees, and toes, CLB, you know? Okay. <laughs> Dang. Uh, now, Alex, Alex, you're not much. Are, have you been much of a historic Drake fan? Uh, I like Drake. I do get down with Drake. Cool, cool, cool. What about Kanye? So let me let me wait, let me Kanye. asterisk that though because okay. this man has never heard this man has never Cameron have you heard uh before I say this have you heard story of Adidon? Have I heard what? Have you heard the story of Adidon? I don't think so. Fuck! What are we, David? What are we doing? <laughs> are we just weird? Is that, is that like, is? explain it. What should I should I know? So We're gonna three years out. ago. You remember this is how interesting? Because I'm you that, remember that how, didn't ring a bell. You remember usually, how usually of... with usually with shit like that that you and David like both agree on, I've heard of one way or another in some like Xbox Live party up or down, but this, it's not ringing a bell, so I'm very curious. We definitely came over this, but it might have just been us too. We'll see. I mean, it, I might be whiffing real hard <laughs> here, but who knows? Um. Well, you remember how uh, Scorpion is basically half of it is about his kid, and you know, hide. I wasn't hiding my kid from the world, or I wasn't hiding my world from the kid. I was hiding the kid from the world, whatever. Fuck it, it, whatever he says. It wasn't that part. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, did are you aware of um, the Drake and Pusha beef at all? Yeah, Pusha T beef. Yes. Okay. So 
he basically you guys like, when him. when there was a there was a time when like we finished up a podcast and i was gonna go to bed and i like i was just doing shit on my phone and you guys were talking about it for a while i think you were like educating alex on it or something yeah um, something like that so i i heard you guys like uh rehash mm-hmm. a lot of it but i think i remember we were playing destiny 2 when the fucking push a track dropped that exposed that he had a kid and everything and so i remember like i remember that happening when it happened and also like you guys rehashing it later on so i'm very i'm i'm largely aware of it i don't know i haven't actually heard that track i don't think oh my god unless it was over the mic it was probably over the mic i'll put Um, for you at the episode okay fair enough so anyway that's yeah that's what it is it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the better diss tracks. I agree. That's the name of the me. track. Cameron, you're like you're not coming through. Yeah, it is. Okay, you're coming through. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I it's lagged. called a story of added on. He he ran over the story of OJ beat from Jay Z. Yeah, but anyway, gotcha. which has significance in his own. I don't even know why I brought that up. Anyway, but oh, that I was gonna say, Alex hasn't heard that. So Alex gotcha. doesn't listen to like full Drake projects. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, when's the last time you heard a, a like a full Drake project, Alex? I don't know. I've heard his first joint. I've heard Take Care. You haven't heard nothing was the same? Not all of it. That breaks my heart, man. <laughs> damn, damn, damn. It's a goddamn God damn. shame. But yeah. Um, I, I like I don't Drake know. though. He does. He he has a he in, has a really he has a certain respect for Drake. In full I can, honesty, I, I don't I don't think I've sat down and listened to the entirety of Nothing Was the Same. Y'all are so, fucking missing out. I know, man. dude. It's it's like I know so much from the discography of like massive artists like Kanye and 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 mm-hmm. uh, now Jay because of the podcast and then like Eminem and and uh, Drake. But like mm-hmm. projects from like when we we're in high school, late middle school, stuff like that. Like I just never fully return to, even though I know like the top three or five hits off the off the album. So it's like an yeah, interesting, like you know, like starting from the bottom and like yeah, worst behavior of course, and stuff. Of course, you know? mm-hmm. yeah. But yeah, yeah I, I don't. I don't want people thinking I'm a Drake fanboy. I mean, I I love Kanye. <laughs> yeah. I love Kanye. Yeah. The worst thing I could yeah. ever imagine is people yeah. perceiving me, me, me as, as a Drake, Drake fanboy. Fan. Drake stan. God forbid. I don't I'm want people saying, to think like, I actually no, no. Like, Drake. Like, I'm saying CLB Drake. is better, but I, I I mean Kanye is is one of the greatest. You know, he's absolutely. Got I will stand firm yes. with that. Like, of course, dude. Mm. I had Kanye, con- is, but- up to uh, Kanye has the best first five album run ever, ever. Not even close. Yeah. he's yeah. got five back to back classics. Every mm. fucking album that he released up through 2010 was a classic. Are you fucking like that's just bonkers? Yeah, it's nuts. Like, when you say it like that, yep. yeah, that's true. I and I was, was giving David a hard time with my What's beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, but I've come, I've come around. Yeah. <laughs> What's the fifth one? My beautiful. Yeah. Am I counting wrong? No, no ways. It's it's oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. graduation. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's fucking classics. Well, yeah, I think it's fair to say he's at a point in his career where he's a far cry from that. You know, I mean, even, no, even if you like, even if you love this phase, it's very, very different. He's on some completely different stuff. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. His. his you know, his brand and his life perspective and what he cares to talk about is very different. Um, I, I revisit, I mean, I had, um, uh, graduate or not graduation. Um, fucking late. Reg- what am I saying? Um, God damn it. There's what's one the, of them. What's the first, what's the first college dropout? Drop college dropout. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. I could only think of the other ones because you had been listing them. It's like, God damn it. Because the mm. dropout is the worst. Anyway. Yeah. Which is like kind of <laughs> sick because I like it so much. Um, no. So anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. So fuck, I'm so, that was such a, such a process for no reason that I've completely derailed myself and I have no idea where I was going. Oh, oh my god anyway Kanye's some, perspective has changed Kanye's yeah, perspective has changed so like it, the early stuff it, there's a lot of sociopolitical stuff and the like he still does I couldn't name you the track there was he still in his um current process does like the lighthearted stuff the lighthearted type beat over like the very serious topics like he does um in college dropout with um the fucking first track and i don't know why i'm forgetting literally everything care. about an album i like we don't care yeah thank you yeah. an album i i like a lot um i'm a i'm a huge kanye fan so, let's let's make that clear so yes mm-hmm. he he got yeah. the sociopolitical stuff and i like that a lot but the whole the more like 
philosophical, existential, religious Kanye, I just don't get on board with. Like, I understand where he's coming from, and I empathize and stuff like that, and, like, I, I see his perspective through his art, what he's creating on this album, but it's not something I'm, like, mm-hmm. g- it's not a ride I'm going to ride multiple times. It's, it's yeah. I found it I found it largely, you know, um, it didn't inspire me or, like, hook me in many ways at all. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was always, it was... Like, I understand, like, that's what you're doing. That's your perspective. But it, I wasn't along mm-hmm. for the ride, is what I'm saying. I think I think that's a large in part, at least my biggest gripe with this sort of phase of Kanye, the whole, you know, Christianity is my entire life thing, um, being that most of his references to uh, the Bible and uh, living in a holy way are beyond elementary and very surface mm-hmm. level. Like mm-hmm. we can talk about a few bars that are just egregiously corny, like the holy water are my beverages. I got the holy <laughs> water are my beverages shit on off the grid. What about uh, God the Father, like Maury? <laughs> dude, that shit, that too. That's on the same track, right? Uh, I'm not sure, but maybe. Oh, yeah, well, there's, well, like well, a, dude, there's like a there's like a verse. Sixty, I take selfies, something like that. That he lands. I'm like, dude, I like. Are you kidding me? Uh, there's like, a bar on uh, Jesus is King where he's like, when I thought the book of Job was a job. Yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. like, see, like that, Jesus that kind of shit. I just, I, it's funny in the moment, but then it's like, I know. Wow, there's like, there's so many, there's, there's so many great stories in the, in the Bible that you can pull mean. from, like, for inspiration, and you just choose to do these really corny, haha, like slapstick comedy bars about it, and it's like. Yeah, Why? you're not getting I mean, into anything. I mean, I definitely respect his direction. Uh, I would say for me lately, I haven't been particularly hype about any of his recent projects. I, I mean, there's a few tracks I like on each. You know, Jesus is King. There's some I like. Yay. There's something I like. I enjoyed when he was doing like the Sunday service things. I think it was on Coachella on TV one time, something like that. And I and I actually enjoy when he has like the the gospel choir and stuff. I mean. It's cool. Yeah. The gospel card is cool. Respect him, and I definitely yeah. realize, you know, I mean, as an artist, he's evolving, and he's not going to be the same as he was. But at the same time, that was when he was making the best music, in my opinion. And even before his own projects, you know, he was producing. He was on like the Blueprint, Jay Z. Yep. It's just yeah. the Dynasty just these album, crazy all that. tracks yeah. where it's like it's the mm-hmm. golden age for me. Uh, right. Yeah. I just think he's not as. I don't know if his interests are different. If he's just so successful now that he just can't relate to normal people anymore in a certain like, yeah, I mean, like average people, not like normal in a good or bad way. But like, you know, just him being that disconnected from regular life and then r- focusing on spiritual stuff. But like Trevor said, it's not like, except for a few times, I will say he did it pretty well sometimes on this album. Um, but for the most part, it's not like. Oh, that's some real stuff collect you know connected to your faith like I, I i can totally get into that if he was doing it but it's just he's not as real or as like on on point as he was anymore he's just not or not rapping as well like right when jay electronica comes through with a more spiritual verse than anything you spit on that entire oh, yeah. album there's a problem there's uh, a problem when there's 27 tracks and and jay has 24 bars that are more spiritual and more religiously connected than anything you spit on that entire album. That's a, that's a huge problem for me. Yeah. I mean, I love that J electronica verse is pretty hard to beat. I would say it's that's... pretty fucking fire, man. That J electronica, like double entendre shit that he did <laughs> with his name. Like, yeah. dude, bro, that was fucking wild. Like, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll give credit where credit is due. I want him to delve deeper into this shit because it like, it is so clearly marked a different person in him that I just wish I could see why it's so connected. Like he went so far as to censor the whole album. Not yeah. only that, Damn true. he yeah. wrote yeah, he yeah. wrote verses with curse words and then proceeded to fucking censor himself. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? That is horrible. Can we please talk about that? It's rough. I yeah we I Tell really wish everyone that you're collaborating with to just write verses that don't have curse words. That's one of the problems too is he doesn't plan as much nowadays. Like he was making it in the stadium, he was like working on it during the performances, which is a cool idea. I honestly think, but like then you just get like people are cussing. You decide to censor it at the last second, so it's now it just has censors in it and it sounds 
pretty bad. It's like I'm back when like eight years old. Like my my mom <laughs> bought me a fucking set or a clean CD. It's like, are you shitting me? Like at least replace the words with something. Like if that it like if it really hurts your soul that much, like yeah. I, I, I honestly I completely forgot that it was censored until I started shuffling it again today, like on the way home. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, are um, you fucking like why why? <laughs> Random yeah. random story from my childhood. Um, I have a memory of uh, you guys know Nickelback, right? Oh, that man. that that, uh, that man, band man, that man. everyone everyone likes to hate on, but I've I've never had a terrible Every problems with their hits. Man, man. <laughs> yeah, so we all just want to be big rock stars in hilltop houses, driving fifteen That's cars. Um, Why so fifteen car garage. So exactly. Um, <laughs> You only got six cars. How many is it? I don't know. But, yeah. 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 So I remember listening to songs of that band on the radio. And obviously with the radio edit, they like blank out the swears. And so I remember saying out loud to my mom, you know, and this was back when I was a, a nice, uh, a perfect Christian image boy. of a nice Catholic, uh, young, young Catholic elementary school boy. Young cat, um, young young cat, who who loved <laughs> cat, who, who cat. loved who loved uh, God and Jesus with all his heart. Um, Lovely. I was I I remember saying, you know, I like Nickelback so much because, like, he he writes his lyrics where like there would be a swear, but then he just doesn't say it, and so he censors himself. <laughs> And I had like I had no concept of like the fact that the radio was censoring the swears and stuff like that and whatever. And then there there was another there was another time where I went home with a with a with a classmate and or like went over for his house to hang out after school and there was like that same song on, but it was off of a CD, not the radio, and so the swear came in and his mom and it's the mom of a it's a mom who's sending also her child to a super Catholic school, like super Catholic as in like it's literally a Catholic school turns around to the back seat of the minivan and it's like never ever say that in your entire life ever i can't believe he said that i know he's an artist but like you should never ever use I swear words an artist. in your entire life and just <laughs> like yeah so i have two it's, stories it's so it's so you funny just, you Cen- just reminded yeah, me yeah 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 censoring is like is so funny because it's it's honestly it's altogether necessary we can get into a whole conversation about swear words like on a variety podcast that'd be kind of fun honestly um probably but with but like in terms of exposing children to them and everything like that's a whole thing and and having the public not be exposed like against their will or whatever but like we're saying with like i go on spotify and i queue up kanye west uh, the the rapper to like entertain me and like it's it's a it's a very artistic choice to say like I, there's no swear words on this album and I don't know the dynamic like you were saying, but if he had people f- feature, which is another conversation I want to have with the fact that the features aren't credited in the track list, basically, mm-hmm. which, which is bullshit. Is, by which the way, which I want to yeah I want to have that be a separate conversation because I'm sure you guys have something to say about that. I um, do. But so if you if it is like you're saying it was where they just wrote the verses and then he just like cut them out after that's whack honestly i don't i don't know how to feel about that because it's just like you're right they could just center their verses their rhymes like their general thoughts i mean without how, including how else swear would words. that play out exactly how else would that yeah play out? i don't know like, i have no idea there. Mm-hmm. i have like, no idea if, if i knew that my verse was going to be censored i would be like okay let me substitute it so i can get every word across i only have 16 mm-hmm. bars to do this let me go ahead and say everything so yeah. that nothing is omitted. I mean, there would be exceptions. It's like, I mean, we did the Wolf of Wall Street episode, fucking last episode, and it was like I said, the with for the fact that it was you know forty minutes shorter in Saudi Arabia because they cut it for swear words and stuff like that. Is like, if you were gonna be cussing your head off in your verse and like being super aggressive and like the swear words are part of your point and you want to be like uh edgy and like edgy is the wrong wrong word because that's like stigmatized now but like you want to you want to cut deep basically and you want to be dangerous as it were and you include all these swear words you want to be in too deep sure yeah yeah (laughs) i guess um and so and and, (laughs) god damn it Um, maybe that pussy was so with the weight 
So, can't fuck what you saying, man. Fuck that. All, shit. It, all it takes is four mumbled words, and fuck Trevor and David are off on a whole fucking fuck adventure together. Yeah, when that pussy was so what the fuck? Um, but yeah, all together. That yeah, it's uh, writing the it's verses whack. and then having shit cut it's is, no, it's, is it's very whack. very whack. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. big whack. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, well, that, I don't agree with that direction at all. Yeah. <sighs> if you want to get into yeah, what like, do we, what, what do you feel you wanna, that that? Oh, I did want to. Yeah, I mean, the there features. was just a couple of funny. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell your censoring stories. Uh, Tell your censoring. I was just stories. gonna say. Well, one, I was like, I used to be. I used to say like, don't say that bad word. Like back yeah, when yeah, I was yeah, like yeah, two yeah. or three years old. Yeah, like yeah. my mom can attest to that. <laughs> um, and then two would be. Oh, you adorable. remember the song "Give You Hell" by oh, yeah. uh, All yeah, Night yeah. Rejects. Give you hell, I used hope to it ask, gives you hell. Yeah, because that song was on the radio all the time. And I used to ask my mom for permission. I was like 12 when that song came out. Uh, to, <laughs> to say worth a damn? To, to sing it, yeah. Damn. If you if find you a man hell, that's oh, worth yeah. a damn, then I used to ask her for permission to sing that. That's so good. Yeah, you can sing it. You can sing it. Um, my mom's nice. cool. Shout out to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can... So, I can tell a story another time about how I was that good little Catholic boy, and then I got introduced by a family friend to Dane Cook, who was like his entire brand was swearing his head off for comedy. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's, another, it's whack. Art, art is whack. So anyway, my yeah. music swore upside down. Um, yeah, exactly. What did we, you, we? Who? Someone mentioned features. Who? Yeah, I, I was. I was saying about the in my in midpoint um, before that the like. Everything on Donda just says the track name and then Kanye West. And yep. mm-hmm. I mean, in so, contrast, I mean, we're talking about them both. I might as well make the contrast that like everything on Certified Lover Boy in the track title says with and then the features, which. So there's there's different so ways that this goes about. Right. So there's three different you know ways more, that so artists yeah. can. There's three me. different ways that artists can do this. There, there's the Kanye route where it's just the song title. No features are credited. There's a second one where the way that Drake did it, where um, the way that works on streaming services, if you do with instead of featuring, it puts your name next to Drake's underneath the song title. So when you click the um, when you like go to the song itself, you can click and it'll count towards that featured artist's streaming numbers. So if you go on Project Pat's page, it'll go it'll have Knife Talk like top Uh five because he's on that, which is amazing you know that's like that's like yeah. the best that's yeah. the best scenario right because it gives there, a, it, it, as, and it i'm gives gonna everyone. say there's no way that hurts the no. f- the main artist no no because you're you're still going you're like every every string like it, it's it's equal every time yeah, you yeah, yeah. listen to knife talk and you let and you're on project pat's page you're giving drake a stream as well you're giving that's a thing to both like the, yeah yeah that's that's, cool. that's the best that's the best way and then there's another way where it doesn't have width. It says feature, yeah. where mm-hmm. it just has Drake, but it would be like featuring Twenty One Savage. And granted, he's on the song, and people will go to his page because they like his verse, but they won't have the streaming numbers associated with it. Are there so, any any rules or regulations about that, or is it just like you do what you want? Like, um, I, it's like just in, you within, do what you want within like within contracting and stuff like that like could could they draw I'm it sure. up could they draw it up to say like you have to say you have to do this or that I'm with, sure with the the features. Features. there probably is a clause that says hey you need to credit features on certain yeah. albums for yeah sure. that'd be interesting yeah. like with their artists or with their label I, that, that would be that would be interesting to know whether it's the label doing that or the individual artists themselves whether they I think the individual artist about... has more pull on that yeah honestly if I'm being honest, because I, it doesn't happen say. too often. It doesn't happen too often where you'll never see features. Like if you yeah, go to yeah. Astro World yeah. by Travis Scott, you'll never see features on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Like they're mm-hmm. it's just sicko mode. You won't see Drake on there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think it's bullshit how they do that. Honestly, I don't like. Th- I think it's cool uh, if you look at it from the perspective of like hidden features and when you're listening to the album for the first time you're listening to it front to back you don't have any expectations of oh there's an old verse on here so let me go to that verse you know or let me go to that song real quick Uh you know you just you go through and you're like oh shit Uh fucking sway lee's on this shit you know like shit like that but Uh once you listen to the album for the first time it's bullshit i feel that the artist yeah yeah Yeah. i feel like i feel that same way because that the exact same thing happened to me 
like last week because Jay Balvin came up with a new album and I was listening to it in the car and he has no features as well. And so like I heard his voice and I'm like, oh, Suna is on this song. Right. This is dope. And then I freaked, I'm like, this is, I did because because it's hidden. But then yeah. it's like, but then after that, and I, I know the song, I know he's on it, but now I don't, I don't, I mean, there's no features. Like there's like other tracks with other artists features and I don't know who they are. And now I have to actively look them up Right. Look yeah. Up, find who it is. There was there was a thing. I think I I swear I saw this trend a while back where like if artists would do the hidden features after like a little while they would put the features on the album, mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of ideal. I really love the surprise feature experience, yeah. but then you know have the. Right. I mean, obviously they're like legally credited somewhere, credited somewhere with like being part of the song, and that that has to happen with the label and stuff. But right, that's where know, all putting, their publishing money comes from is the yeah. credits. But putting it out there is is nice after a while so i agree i think there should be a middle point i think that like it should also like for the week like say if it was like you know every rap album from this day forward didn't have any features credited for the first week and then mm -hmm. after the first week it does exactly what you do where it puts the featuring you know all that shit. i mm -hmm. think it should act like retroactively count those streams for that artist and then put it right. on the page I think everyone should get a boost for working on Drake's album. Everyone is going to listen to Drake's yeah. album. Everyone yeah, credited yeah. on there, which yeah. they did. They all yeah. got credit. Like every one of those songs has 40 million plays or more. It's ridiculous. Like that mm -hmm. that does wonders for those people. Yeah, like yeah. Thames, I'm sure, is in another stratosphere because he's on because she's on Drake's album. Yeah, it's dope. So, so I, I will say I'll give, I'll give credit to that. I mean, he like he gets a lot of heat for being like a quote unquote culture vulture and by like using he'll borrow certain, you know, UK flows or he'll do like, you know, Afro oh, yeah. beats or shit yeah. like that. Did you mean more life? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But he just he he shines. He's so he's like the biggest rapper like of all time. Damn near like uh, I, he, I don't have just, a problem with that because I don't people, either. I don't really fuck with the UK it. shit. I don't, I, I don't really I don't like UK. I think there was another talking point on I Twitter like that Kanye is better on drill beats than than Drake, and I fully agree. Grime and, oh, yeah. Grime and Drill are both cool. That, yeah. You said what? Grime and Drill are both cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Grimes is cool. I wish they're, they're I, wish cool I liked it. I mean, Grimes. Yeah. yeah, I knew you were gonna do that. I I like as soon as I said Grime, I was like, someone's gonna make the joke. <laughs> I like drill. Yeah. I like uh, I like G Hero a lot, but I mean right. he's not really he's not really mm -hmm. drill anymore. But either way, yeah, yeah. There's, well, a, there's, a, there's a funny the there's a funny bit where it's like a it's like every drill beat ever or whatever, and then, then it starts and it's like I should probably I should probably say uh, shout out to my friends in the in the in the prison. Uh, shout out to Margaret and Jeremy in the pen for tax evasion. Uh, free my homies in the pen. In the pen. <laughs> it's uh, wait, it's, wait, wait. it's my good. Yeah. Unknown P. That's who. Unknown P. That's my boy. That's my boy. Unknown P. Oh, that could be him. Yeah, he's funny. It, oh, that might I've be. Seen, it. There's, I think I've it's seen an animation. Him, yeah. It's a. It's something I've seen yeah. like a lot of the time. Uh, there was. P. It was. There was a. There was a tr trend on TikTok using that audio of like it's mm -hmm. just a drill beat with a, a basically a satirical bars over it. Yeah, or, yeah he's and, funny. And, but it yeah. was like mm -hmm. it was Character. it was dudes dressed up as like. uh founding fathers or you know like old old english type stuff like running around in gta like blowing shit up it was, it was hilarious um yeah. heavy line, heavy sidebar for this podcast episode yeah. but yeah anyway the bottom line soldier boy will forever say that drake stole his flow <laughs> yeah. no word for word bar if for bar yo if we're talking which he didn't like I, I, I he was such a fucking idiot for saying that soldier um, game i think Yo, the fact that he was like the fact that obviously that that was a meme. Like he's he's you know being completely over exaggerated, but the fact that people took that and ran and said, "Hey, he's stealing from people back in 2010 when rappers have been doing that since rap was fucking invented, bro." Like, yeah, Hove has done it a million times. Mm. What are you talking about? I, I don't I don't know I'm gonna fucking lose my yeah mind, we've but. we've had conversations on the podcast before about how art based off of other art isn't is is just art like that's just how the entire thing works it's sampling. not like they're sampling plagiarism definitely exists but like yeah I mean anyone who knows anything about music which what you 
um, Alex and David especially have taught me about in their beat production is like that sampling isn't just like an easy thing to do. Like you don't just show up with no. a sample and be like, this is a beat now. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's All something right. you have to work in and, and make your own. So it's mm-hmm. not, it's, yeah. I mean, obvi- there there are yeah. there are dead set examples of, of people just like copy cut paste from some unknown band with a, with a bigger artist that if you just yeah. Google it, you'll find those cases and stuff uh-huh. like that. But it, yeah, I mean- if if mm-hmm. you're gonna roast fucking every example of someone taking inspiration from a source, then we wouldn't have art. Rap, rap is like we rap literally we like, wouldn't we literally wouldn't no have art around if you can't. Yeah, yeah rap exactly. is no longer rap if you cannot just like pay homage to like a certain lyric. That exactly. especially considering those lyrics yeah. that he's paying homage to are very well known. Mm-hmm. Like, that that brings up something that that I think is worth talking about too is, is cause I wasn't quite on those front lines of those comments like mm-hmm. Trevor was, but I was seeing like <laughs> the front lines, like they're talking about, uh, Kanye's samples on Donda and Donda is a less sample heavy project from Kanye and Kanye is known for sampling. Mm-hmm. And so like, there's people who are like, I've seen comments like it's so impressive how Kanye how this album doesn't rely on samples and i'm like relying on samples like <laughs> you that's it's not relying it's on, art it's, not relying it's, on a, like, it's an oxymoron he, he damn near created the chipmunk soul shit like yeah I'm yeah like, what are you people talking about like kanye is do you know who he is do you know who <laughs> right. he literally like three beats a day for like five beats a day for three summers doing all that sampling shit that ain't all easy man track, five all his tracks that are classics like that's a different yeah. a lot of samples a lot of it is sampled oh, yeah. And it, yeah. it's not like a lot it's of soul a samples. Thing. i mean i deserve to do these numbers, numbers. It's, it's crazy yeah. what he does with these samples you hear the original and you hear that what he did with it and it's like this is mm-hmm. an insane level of production you know that's when you appreciate sampling <clears> you can't say that yeah, it's a lame yeah. way of thinking. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, especially looking at this album, you know, some of the um, production is just undercooked, man. Like Junior, what is that beat, bro? <laughs> yeah. what the frick yeah, is that? okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. We're going at this. Let's yeah. let's see some let's see some tracks. Let's see some tracks. It is not garbage. garbage. The beat is the organ chords. The, the organ chords are great. And then like a little clap, basically. That's, dude, I need an organ, and that's it. I'm oh, good, man. God. That beat is a, um, right, so we're, we're gonna talk about some other beats then. I'm gonna I'm okay. gonna say that in general, none of the I don't I, I can't think off the top of my head of a beat on on uh, Donda that upset me, but none yeah. of them particularly inspired me or made the, the the stank face was not made um, no. at any point. Yes, yeah, that's, that's more um, what it is. It, it, it was just great, like great, I was but... just like okay, we're here. I'm not I'm not like upset about this, yeah. but I'm not like right was home. i'm not right it was, the homies. The mill, it was your run of the mill drill and trap shit like that's just basically what it was i think every it didn't even feel that like a single a singular loop that just went on and on and on it's not right he does he does like the minimalism thing nowadays where it's not a lot of ideas combined into one beat it's like he has mm-hmm. like the one idea and that's the beat and then he moves on it seems like right that's... i will say though if y'all shit on jail the original not part two know. Yeah, kicking yeah. you off the podcast that's it jail? it's over gone like jail. jail is my favorite on that album um, oh, okay jail is jail a is, good track dude, only jail's great if if you Except if you for the don't coal, or the coal if you don't think about <laughs> anything on the jail track and you just think about the fact that it generated the meme of someone's going to jail tonight then it's a good track because on on tiktok and other bullshit it's just been like like absolutely ridiculous yeah. shit of like someone's going to jail and that you got priors it's like it's it's so good um i don't i'm glad i haven't looked at understand it even because... in, the, in the yeah i you actually have i think about 300 I, see I think i see it every day i think i've sent you 300 tiktoks <laughs> that you haven't opened i think I like i don't even look at tiktok at all the only time i'm on tiktok is for our podcast and for my streaming yeah, account yeah exactly I i've i've sent you literally a billion fucking things that you definitely have not opened and you're gonna like have a treasure trove of dumbass shit that's like Ooh. six months old mm-hmm. treasure trove yeah didn't even do it on purpose but yeah mm-hmm. there it is mm-hmm. triple um, entendre yeah. don't even ask me out I do like I do like jail. It's got it's got hove on it, you know. Yeah. I like the way it sounds. Can we talk about it that whole feature though? Yeah. But I will say beforehand that like 
like I like the track, and I feel and I, f- I feel the same way about a lot of tracks. It doesn't need to be five minutes though. Yeah, that that mm. is epitomized in God Breathes for me, where he has that like yeah. choir outro yeah, that's like, man. Song, and the yeah. whole song like basically two ideas maybe like it's it's, it's literally the 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 bass the dun, 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 dun. yeah and then it's the mm. the synth that comes out of nowhere and that's it that's the entirety of the song right and he's yeah. like i don't go breed on it there we yeah. yeah. like, talk about how he says breed he <laughs> doesn't like try to breathe i know that's a really that's honestly a really difficult word to articulate especially yeah. in a rap song because you kind of sound corny when you are over articulate words, especially yeah, when you're yeah. rapping. But like, breathe the duh. Breathe, <laughs> breathe like, the duh. Like, like, breathe the duh. I know God breathe on this. I, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I, I can't actually at all be mad about that. I think you made. May, I think you made the point for what you agree with less than what you disagree with. Where you were like, I understand it's really hard to enunciate, but like, it's trash. But it doesn't like, do with the fact that I hear breed. Over breed. I mean, I guess like I, I don't know, the whole way he, he says literally it. says breed. I know God breed on this. Like there, there's no way to it's with that flow. Considering how fast he's saying it, there's no way to to elongate that I, word. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's yeah. that's. I mean, that makes sense. I just I think you're All saying right. the same thing. Like I can't hold it against him because I would do the same shit. So it's well, like yeah. I can hold it against him considering he you know created that flow. You know what I mean? Yep, yeah, I right. can hold it against him too. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. It burnt it. Bur- it pierces my soul. Let's, we okay, we skipped yeah. the whole track. Skip, yeah, we skipped jail a little bit. Yeah, it's I think okay. it's a good. We're, we are not in order. We are not in order. Yeah, so. it doesn't matter. But this is one of the good tracks. So the I think the Jay Z feature is good. I don't think he's like in like that. I don't know. This is gonna sound corny. He's not but like he's, he's not, not in. Well, I think they're about equal, honestly. But he's not in the God mode he was in in like 2018 when he had like What's Free and every verse he put out was like just better than what anyone else was doing he's sort of like in a a pretty good jay-z form but that's how i feel about both of the features honestly that's fair just like how renegades is a eminem track you think love all is the yeah. same as jail that's about equal i mean they're no. different different goals i think he has better wordplay and like themes on jail but like love all is just better flow and like you know it's a good beat and everything like he and he's he's talking about some you know interesting stuff i guess but mm-hmm. i guess I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, does, we, we do guess. We do guess. It's oh not that. Oh my God. Hova and Jesus, or Jesus, like Moses and Jesus. What is that flow, bro? I, I don't it's like, like it. Yeah. Big, I, I was gonna. Like I was gonna say. I, I like it. I like it when he picks up at all. I like it when he picks up pace. Um, uh-huh. it starts off mad slow, and mm-hmm. yeah. I, That's another thing. I sleep on it up. for sure. Mm. Mm-hmm. I don't think I throw a disease. One one criticism I have of Kanye and his oh, Christianity phase, if you will, is that like phase. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's no, that's facts. I, mean, I know, I, like I, that's I that's. Like I just sorry. So let me let me so let me real quick. Home. Let me real quick real, 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 real quick. The only reason I laughed at that is that's like you said that casually, but that's a ridiculously controversial take. Like people will like die on a hill to say like that he found God and like everything like that. And, no, good for him. And then I'm people people will I'm also happy. people will also back you to the death about about calling it a phase and stuff like that. So it's it, it was just funny to me that you dropped it as like a as like oh, a no no I call it a phase because he does this shit where he will like. He will like replace his name with Jesus. Like, if you're yeah. a real Christian, you, why would you like? I am. Jesus, you can't. You I can't. Yeah, equating yourself to God is literally you, a sin. Yeah. yeah. So, like, like, I don't get that. I don't get that at all because he does yeah. that a lot. Are you referring like, to the Jesus, or are you referring to this? Like, album? I mean, he's that. That's what he's doing. Not what well, when yeah. he calls himself Jesus. What do you think he's doing? He's saying he's Jesus. Yeah. You know, yeah. and if you're a really hardcore Christian, you wouldn't say that. that yeah. That's my thing. Yeah, there's a couple like lines on here that are like border borderline blasphemous, and it's like okay, <laughs> so what? Where's the consistency? I don't know. I've always felt that way about it, ever, even since even be, since before, but yeah, he does it. He I'll had the book of Ye where he changed. I mean, he had the book of Ye where he had the Bible. Not, he took I'm God. You know, it's, it's different. Replaced but... it with Ye with Kanye with his name. Uh, yeah. yeah. Can you repeat that, Alex? Like I'm pretty like it's like the book of Ye, right? Where it's yeah. the Bible, but all, every Jesus in the Bible is replaced with Yay. Yeah. Yeah. So what is that? What are you doing? Yeah. The book of Yay. Yes, yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's an actual thing. Right? It, Who the fuck is buying that? 
God help us. <laughs> Exactly. It, it really feels, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it feels deeply performative, right? Yeah, As opposed yeah. to legitimate faith, which, well, I mean, as as a person outside of faith, not against it, not judging it at all. I just exist outside of it largely. I it, it feels like, from an objective perspective, almost disrespectful to the people who take it seriously. To that's to, what I feel. To, yeah. 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 So I mean. Yeah. The, the faith is a very subjective thing though where mm -hmm. you'd see that across the world mm -hmm. a lot of different people are very sure that they have the right answer about existence mm -hmm. and, and faith and religion and stuff like that and so interpretation is a big thing but if you're gonna do the whole sunday service gospel choir like if you're gonna insert yourself into an established culture as opposed to developing your own then it would make sense to pay homage and be true to that culture i think is what right. you're what you're really trying to hammer home um yeah and and the difference is you know he's he's kind of taking what he wants and mm -hmm. rolling with it elsewhere as opposed to adhering to Mm -hmm. to the established beliefs um yeah which should we i yeah. i I'd, i'd yeah no I, I figured trevor would be back in time as as i finished that point so i figured it'd be good nice. um yeah. so we're good yeah um yeah i don't i don't want to like i mean yeah. it is an intense thing in terms of religion and and people take that thing very very seriously it's the number one priority in a lot of people's lives and i can't blame them for it because existence mm -hmm. is difficult of course yeah. um answers are important it's just mm -hmm. it, yeah so i yeah because yeah it it just reminds me a lot on hobes verse because there's even he even says he already told you he who he think he is all right, right. I, every time i hear that i think of the clip of kanye when he's like i just told you who i thought i was a god, god. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. and i'm like i don't yeah. know if, is that what jay-z's referring to i'm pretty sure it might be i don't know he has uh he has some clever wordplay in there where he references a he, bunch of old kanye does. stuff it's really cool he, he does, does but. but like kanye does stuff like that and i mean it i mean it, for me it's a criticism i have of if he's in really yeah i guess it. he's on a, he's trying uh, he's trying to be different now i don't know but more on the music i it's guess it's really different yeah i didn't uh, have a lot to get to yeah, we, we do. So, we're an hour in. We still have a lot to get to. Jeez. We're an hour in. We've we've talked about two tracks in depth, <laughs> basically. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. I mean, I don't. I, if we talked about every track on both albums in depth, I would literally shoot myself in the head. So yeah, there's no way I would even want to do that, yeah. even off the off the podcast. Exactly. Honestly. So do we have like uh, if we're? I guess if we're on Donda, do we want to talk about highlights and lowlights and stuff? Yeah, let's, absolutely. Let's, 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 let's yeah. do it. So Donda is a clear highlight, or Donda. Donda is a highlight. I mean, honestly, <laughs> honestly, the Donda track that that little nice speech, shit. I I yeah. kind of like. I honestly, it yeah. was, why it was it was cool to to have that. It's what we talked about earlier with like, is this really truly a tribute to his mom and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. And you got it's to cool hear you got to hear some words that he would. Uh, I don't. Is that her actual voice? Yes, that's her. That's, that's right, literally, her back in, like, that's literally a recording of her. Oh, so wait, even yeah. if even if it wasn't even if it wasn't her, like hearing words that could be attributed to her would be cool. But th that the fact that it's her literal um, quote is is cool, and it's a tribute. And all of us have loved ones in our lives, and and we would, I think, a lot of people would do quite a lot of maybe terrible things i'm not i'm not trying to make it a, it's a would you rather kind of a thing but to immortalize someone that we very very much care about uh, i think a lot of us would do whatever we could um so for i him, agree with that point so I, it's, I just, it's, it's, I, it's hard to blame him for having the platform and dedicating it to i i just wish that i just wish the album was more about her for sure yeah i mean i wish, i said wish, i said what i said um, earlier about like tributing a work of art and but i don't feel that strongly about the work of art so i can't really you know continue to support that kind of line of thinking um yeah if it was 12 tracks of hey mama variants not like that he needs to rehash old ground but just yeah look I back mean, on his life and the impact that she made like yeah slapping a two minute uh skit about how you know of just a, a random recording of her and calling it a song 
it, it, that's just not good enough for me on a 27 track album mm -hmm. and i get like three legitimate references to her and the rest are just i'm just gonna say her name for no reason it's just that's it's fucking lazy to be honest yeah with you. and it's mm -hmm. it's just kind of the thing with kanye nowadays it's like what exactly is he trying to do the last thing he's gonna do is make it clear like you know it's called donda i'm not talking about her that much you know deal with it like all right yeah. whatever but mm -hmm. it's yeah. not necessarily gonna come into a cohesive piece that i can really enjoy that much yeah but, um, i agree with cameron it, though i like the fact that it yeah. i it, like immortalizes her like yeah. as if she wasn't already idolized um yeah not mm -hmm. idolized immortalized I just wish that it was more focused on her, you know, like a 10 track album. You know, I don't need 27 Eight, tracks. I don't need four tracks that are part twos of songs that were already okay that didn't need extra verses for no reason. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the baby for being a complete piece of dog shit. Well, yeah, let's get that. to that. I, yeah, that's, that's, I, a, that's a whole I did, different thing. I do, I do get, I mean, yeah, it's a tribute album for sure. Uh, I don't like the fact, like, Cause like now that like that name like if I'm arguing with somebody, somebody's telling me CLB is trash. I say you know what Donda's trash. You like Donda? That's trash. But I'm referring to the music. But now I'm saying that his mother is trash. You know, like mm, yeah. yeah, like it kind of desensitizes that value in that sense. Yeah, that's because I'm not talking about his mother, but I am. That's a know? weird like meta yeah. fourth wall kind of topic yeah. kind of thing. I know. Um, yeah. Which is it's Honestly, it's valid, but it's it's a little deeper than i would care to go i guess um, you i yeah, but i guess uh, on the note of the same as David, yeah there there are a few tracks some of my favorites are like dedicated to her or have a big you know cohesive or like a coherent message about her which are jesus lord and then moon i think is entirely about her basically those, I like, are, I think those are two of my favorite tracks in the album <clears throat> by far yeah, moon um, is beautiful like i like just, moon what the heck? I wish I, I, I could. Moon. I could return to each of them as like pieces of art. They're not going to be anything I. Mm -hmm. I think I would listen to on a regular day. You know, mm -hmm. um, there are definite yeah. experiences, especially <laughs> um, the what's in the, Jesus, um, um, Jesus Lord. Yeah, which is it was, it was night. It was like halfway through the album about, and mm -hmm. it was more of the Kanye I wanted to experience where it's that sort of searching ethereal beat um, and kind of an existential kind of tone. Um, and he, he, he interacts with the, with the chorus and everything and the, the background is very nice. And so it, it, yeah. it was a good track. It was a good, it was good experience. It's not like a, I mean, there's no bangers on this album. I don't think there's nothing you would like turn on at a party. Um, that's grid? that's a really weird take yeah. honestly really uh, yeah a lot of these beats mm. are quote unquote banger beats like that's another problem i have <laughs> i with mean calling that's... this donda it's like it had it has first of all it has nothing to do with her and second it's like a lot of this mm. a lot of these beats are like just hard i do I, like I, I do okay I, that's that's, that's just very weird I do yeah, want to I say do, before yeah. before I I would like to get into the conversation before we do I would like to say based on your point like from like ten minutes ago that it would have been very cool if this album was a sort of like coming of age story of Kanye of like this is where I was this is how I came to be kind of a thing mm -hmm. with like this is what my mother taught me this is what being raised by her was like and if it was yeah. a true tribute and and stuff like that because he's he's a very good storyteller in a lot of his his discog yeah and that's a and a very good yeah. like he puts you in a in a sort of a situation and makes you experience it which is what makes him such a good artist um but that's i just I did, with with yeah. the beats like you were saying and with the whole album i i wasn't like placed in a in a spot where i could i could feel what he was talking about like he 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 tends to be very very um compelling and and sort of like puts you exactly where he wants you to be and then tells you what he wants you to know and in this it, i mean in his more recent discog and, and this one as well i i just don't feel particularly inspired and so with the beats like i i'm gonna say like like i said they're not uh, they're not bangers they're not party tracks it's like that they maybe they're framed as such but i wouldn't essentially yeah, were you gonna say, David? Well, that's what I was gonna say about Jesus is, or Jesus Lord, because um, you're talking about how he, you know, he's a storyteller and he'll, you know, 
give you a specific thing and put you in a place. That's what is frustrating almost about that track. I think his verse is so good that it's like, why is he not rapping like this more? Like some yeah, tracks, it's like, definitely. it's just like, I'm talking about different stuff and I'm not really going to say anything. And mm-hmm. what is this about? And uh, for someone who is so like, you know, has such a high opinion of his own art, that's great and everything. And he puts so much like, you know, fanfare and all this stuff into it to just have like the result of it is just these songs where it's most of them are like, uh, I'm going to like bring up the fact that I had split up and I'm talking to God yeah. and that's about it. Yeah. And, and, but, and then Jesus is Lord is like, he goes through this whole freaking family scenario and like this cliffhanger ending and like actually ties yep. in spirituality. It's like, I'm that's like the kind of the Kanye I miss, even though it's a different Kanye, it's like, he's actually coherent and he gives you a message mm-hmm. and songs. I think that song's amazing just for, I mean, every part of it, but, Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think yeah. it is a little long, but it is. It does suffer from. from yeah. that, it, is, it is incredibly too long, but yeah. yeah I mean, with long, the but... the message at the end, I guess you can. It's not. Yeah, really... it, it's, it's like a, it's almost like a fear thing. It's with, it's basically uh, something. I'd... Kendrick. Hmm. Sorry, I definitely talked over your point. Say that again, Trev. I was just gonna say it's like it's almost like I can equate it to uh, "Fear" by Kendrick, where there's like a minute and a half voicemail, either at the beginning or the end. I can't remember what it is. Of. Yeah. Uh, of one of his loved ones just talking about how he found God or whatever. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. Is there anything else we like about Don to different tracks? Like off the grid is a, a banger or not? Off the grid was it's cool. A, I it like was... it. I don't, I'm, I'm still torn on how to like, how I feel about this because I don't, I don't know if I like Kanye morphing, to his feature like with Fabio uh mm-hmm. on this drill beat. I would like to hear him on another beat that isn't the same drill beat I've gotten for the last two, three years. Um I I don't know if he's ever rapped on something that isn't a drill beat, like part of my ignorance. I don't listen to him. But it goes from this this pretty nice beat, honestly, for me, to randomly morphing into a drill beat for a minute and a half for his verse and then it goes back i don't Does know why back? i thought it stayed yeah. drill the whole time maybe it stays i don't know i don't i don't there's yeah. fucking 27 songs in here so yeah i don't i don't I like really i don't i think that my i think my take is i don't enjoy him morphing that honestly uh i like to track i don't mess with cardi that much oh yeah <clears throat> yeah, he's always something I gotta get through on it, and he's on this album like twice. It's yeah, yeah two or three times. Yeah, yeah, four or five times, four or five times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hey yo, um, yeah, I a a, a very I'm uh, definitely not a random high point. I was gonna call it a random high point, a very precise high point, um, on Hurricane, which is something mm-hmm. I've yeah. the audio I've heard many times, um because it's so intoxicating is the father hold me close don't let me down yeah, yeah, like, the way he mixes that is great. it's it's i'm like pissed it cuts off so immediately and doesn't like carry out yeah um i Where guess you can, it, like, i guess it, i guess the the impact kind of lands harder technically because it cuts out Straight after, but it it's literally like a chills ASMR kind of a thing for me, where it just it like it hits every time. Yeah, um, Hurricane's great. Hurricane is great. Yeah, um, so that was definitely cool. Um, there were there it were other kinda, tracks that it I kind of sounded like cool with, Little Baby's but... verse was phoned in. I do like mm-hmm. him on that track, but it sounded I don't I don't enjoy the fact that I can hear when people send verses over email. Oh yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Where the the mixing is totally weird. Yeah, it, 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 not even that he sounded bad on it per se, but it's just that he sounded complete like different. Able fucking the weekend is like clear as day, crystal fucking clear, and mm-hmm. then little baby is like you know in a hotel fucking studio something like that. It's like yeah, why? I get you. like just just yeah. fly him out. It, it'll take thirty minutes to lay the verse, and you're good. Dang, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Hur- no, hurricane's good. Yeah. Um, a lot of the like better tracks for me are on the first half. I do like believe what I say. What is it called? Yeah, believe what I say. The Lauren Hill sample. Yeah. yeah, that that was a fun joint. Oh yeah, uh, I feel that. That was an yeah. interesting vibe. Mm-hmm. It was a more poppy, like uh, lackadaisical yeah. vibe to it. 
Because he yeah. sampled that. He sampled the Lauren Hill track. Yeah. You can hear at the very beginning. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I enjoyed that one a lot. Yeah, that one's good. I like. Um, oh, I like that he has Griselda on it. With uh, was it keep I my spirit? Alive. Okay, so I agree with you on that. I love Conway's on that. I love Conway's verse. Oh yeah. I hate Guns' verse. Oh really? I hate it. What is it? It seems so, like a bog standard one. Well, it it is a very standard West Side Gun verse, which is why I hate it. Mm, On this yeah. particular album, where he has such a quote unquote Christianity direction, he's having someone, especially considering he's censored everything. Mm. He has, you know, thank God my my shooter's gun didn't jam. Yeah. Thank God I, I killed yeah. that guy. Thank God I sold these bricks. Yeah. Like you couldn't you couldn't like you couldn't morph your verse to something else. He's thankful, that bro. Shit, no, man, that shit was dog shit. He's thankful. Fuck out of here, man. LMA. That was the worst verse on here. I I hated that. I cringe yeah. every time I hear that track. Wow. Okay. I feel you. I mean, it's, 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 it's no crazy. place being on this shit. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wish right. Conway. I, I like Conway's, and I'm they sorry, give him I'm like. Sorry for being so authoritative and like aggressive. Oh, good. <laughs> Uh, it's Con- Conway Conway only has like six bars or something. It's yeah, like Conway's got like an eight bar verse, and he fucking goes ham, yeah. and he just like he he like lets he has like lets us a glimpse into his personal life, and that's it. And I'm like, yeah. oh, hey, what if it's so good? Yeah, dang, okay. it's a moment for them. Conway, yeah, no, Conway killed that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think my last favorite. It's one of the best alive, by the way. Sorry, that's fair. One that's of the greatest fair. alive to do it. Yeah. Check out La Machina. Sorry. Check out From King to a God and La Machina. La yes, Machina. Sir. Yeah. I like uh, Roddy Rich, mm-hmm. Pure Souls, and I like Come to Life. And I think the album kind of ends well with the last few. But Roddy's verse was cool. I remember that. Yeah. No Child Left Behind shouldn't even be as I was. I was proud of myself for, without a feature list, uh, recognizing Roddy's voice. Yeah, I couldn't I, do it for I like haven't listened to the, I haven't listened to that album. Just a few tracks of his, so. Yeah, right. I had no track list. I'm lost. I don't... Yeah. yeah, that was that's kind of a be- like. I'm I'm totally not a hater on like I'm not like ooh mumble rap or whatever. But a lot of these new era guys, I feel like they just did stuff that sounded similar, and I could not distinguish them. Like the features, mm-hmm. a lot of the features a he few, had, and yeah. like, they for were sure. mad mediocre for most of the album. I was like, telling, for sure. yeah. I was telling Trevor when I heard Cardi the second time, I didn't even think it was Cardi. I thought it was sixty four AR, or whatever. Oh yeah, that's what it sounded like. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, speaking of like mediocre verses, uh, <laughs> on Jonah, oh. I think Vori, he yeah. d- he like that hook happens like eight times in a three minute ver or a three minute song, and I'm like fucking driving myself insane. Like, yeah, dude, that hook is so shut awkward. up. Yeah, shut up. I and mm-hmm. the way he inflects his voice just gets on my nerves, man. It would have been cool for like the first, like the first two times, and then it mm-hmm. happens eight <laughs> times, man. It's a three minute song, and there's eight bar verses, and then it goes back to, <laughs> "Yo, why would you leave me alone, man? I had to fight these demons by myself." Shut the fuck up, man. Yeah, it's a bad Got song. It. Yeah, "Come to Life" is a really weird one. I feel like Con- Kanye has been working on his You're vocals. Good, bro. And he's like, he's singing his heart out on a few of these. I feel like his vocals are, have gotten a little better. And he's like, just basically just singing on "Come to Life" with like with some piano. Actually, with twenty four. Yeah, yeah. And he has he, like a, he has yeah. some nice nice notes on twenty four. Yeah, it was a it was a nice point which for it, me. Which is definitely it's like a it's definitely a compliment considering the choir was on that song. So, mm-hmm. right. You know, he kind of had to show his ass on that one. He did. Yeah. So. I don't know. Are are we about rap? I don't know if we want to I get into this. What what happened? We I mean we we we're this far into it. We talked we talked about Donda a good amount. We gotta we, we gotta, gotta get some certified. Oh, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, certified common. But do we want to wrap up thoughts on on Donda? I mean, we can like go back. We can like yeah, talk yeah. about certified and then compare them or whatever if we want. But okay, yeah, I think yeah. I mean, we could give our ratings like combined. Yeah, yeah. at the end, okay. yeah. I mean, this is the one you guys are more hyped over for sure, and mm-hmm. had the hype first listen, which I I definitely valued and enjoyed for sure. So Trevor, I think we should do that more often. I Trevor, think for, you are for albums that what happened. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your sentence. I was just going to say, for albums that we're more uh, excited for, especially these blockbuster releases, I think we should try it and have a, a more conf- uh, continued effort of us getting together at noon. Or at noon. <laughs> at it's midnight. hard now. It's hard now for it me. It is hard. No, it is yeah, definitely hard. I got class it's Friday tough. morning. Like, it's that's tough, facts. bro. That's facts. Yeah. Yeah. Thursday but, night, I can't be staying at midnight. But oh, the bro. but those moments when we do get together, like okay. when David and I were just we were just vibing, like we were playing Split Gate the whole night, and then we were like, "Oh, when's the album dropping?" And then yeah. we were we were wondering if we were even going to be able to finish the album, and then we finished it. It was just it was a really cool first listen. We were I'll ever, I'll forever I, I remember that. I wanted it is, to so, so bad. Dude. Listening to albums together, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. We did that with Benny. We did that with Big Sean. You yeah, know, we, I, I love when we do that shit. Yeah, for sure. Black so. Thought. Black yeah. Thought. Black yep. Thought and Benny were the same night, weren't they? They were, yeah. yeah, nuts. That was wild. Yeah, um, I feel someone like I was, was playing saying Warzone something. Warzone at that point. That shit's wild. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, Certified Lover Boy, uh, the most recent release from Drake. We have a uh, a podcast where we talk about music. We have a podcast of four members. Um, one of the members is far more of a Drake fan than the rest of us. I want that mm-hmm. Drake fan to tell us what's the worst track oh. on Certified Lover Boy. It is. <laughs> TSU by TSU. far. Oh. I'm sorry, uh, man. I'm really sorry. The track that two of us are named after, which me after <laughs> you. Daddy is not you around. The track. Mama is not around. Shut the fuck I up, couldn't, man. I couldn't quote you a line off the track, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I watched it come on the pole yeah, and get the sliding down. down. Yeah. Yeah. So this this track, this track is dog shit. It the, it opens up with. Yo, where's my uh, Texas State and chicks at? Where's my Houston yeah. chicks at? It's fun. Yeah, I don't know why I liked it at first, but I'm I definitely don't like it anymore. No, um, <laughs> but it's a, it's, it's a hard pick because there are a few real stinkers. Like I mean, stinkers. Uh, there are some stinkers. She totally disagree with you, oh, and I agree. I agree with you when we first heard it. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, we'll get to it. Keep going. Yeah, too keep sexy. Going. I was just no, gonna no, no, say. Keep going. Shh. <laughs> Way too sexy is one. Way too uh, sexy is fire. <laughs> <laughs> we keep going. We keep going. Keep going. Keep going, David. Uh, well, I'm just talking about some some com- com- competitors. Yeah, for the worst track. But... The worst. Okay, keep going. What's up? Uh, girls what want else? girls. Obviously. Girls want girls. So Freaking okay, obviously. so I guess we're we're gonna let's let's like fire off while we while we while you listen. Yeah. I like that track except for the fact that he says you know. Yo, yo, you a lesbian girl? Me too. That whole fucking that that shit is dog shit. Trevor, awful. Like, Trevor, I wish that song what? dead ass. When I heard that bar, I thought like Trevor is either gonna love or fucking hate <laughs> this bar, and I do not know which, and it's driving <laughs> me nuts. Like literally, I was like, I had no idea if you were gonna think that's the funniest thing on the fucking planet or if it was trash. <laughs> and uh, no. I'm glad I have no. my answer, but I I forgot that I thought that I was like. <laughs> <laughs> like girl you lesbian, me, me too i was like trevor's i don't even think that's the best thing he's ever heard mm-hmm. or literal like depths of hell garbage <laughs> like <laughs> yeah so speaking of why, you, why that's so funny right before that track came on when dave and i were listening to it because poppy's home was right before it yeah yeah that song goes hard I looked, tra- I looked at the track poppy's home is fucking ridiculous yeah we'll get to that um but we were listening to Poppy's Home, and I had it on my second monitor that I was like, I was looking at the track list as it was coming, and I saw Girls Want Girls, and I told David, I'm like, yo, I know exactly how this song is gonna go. They're gonna <laughs> fetishize, they're gonna fetishize lesbians, and they're just gonna, they're just gonna make some stupid remark about it. Mm-hmm. What do you know? Fucking four bars in, you know, <laughs> say she a lesbian girl, me too. And yeah. Girls Want Girls, shut, shut, shut. <laughs> and like, it's funny because I don't like it. Hands and knees. I Shut don't... the fuck up. Don't ever <laughs> oh perform that. If god. I come to see you, Drizzy, I swear to God, if, if I come to see you on tour and you play that fucking track, I'm leaving. I'm <laughs> fucking not leaving. leaving. Drizzy, he's not leaving. Oh, man. He's not going to leave. 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 He's not going to leave. He'll come back. He'll be I'm, he I'm going to the bathroom. He'll, yeah, I was going to say he'll go to the bathroom. He'll come back for way too sexy. It's going to be the... Yeah, you, you ever hear that... Or, here. You ever, like, get a, a recommended on YouTube of, like... This song, but you're in the bathroom at a club oh, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. would be for me with girls while girls. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, when I first heard this song, I didn't mind it until like the the second like the feature came on. I don't know who it is. Baby, but he's little baby. Man. Yeah, with she little like, baby. She like eating pussy. I'm like me too. <laughs> Get out of here, bro. How do you write? 
the concept of both of their verses was I like girls and they like girls. And it's just like, all right, right. It's just like, it's, that's the verse. It's funny like it shit. Is. Is, I like the first half of Drake's uh, verse and then it gets into the lesbian shit. And I'm like, all right, well, you lost me. I'm I'm done with this now. Like, mm-hmm. this, this song could have been, well, it is a home run because it's a fucking meme at this point. And yeah, it exactly. did complete numbers for him, which is exactly what he wanted. Yeah. yeah. But this song could have been a banger. The song could have been great. Mm-hmm. I, I like his com- flow. I guess. I think if it was a completely different song. It could have been great. I think the beat <laughs> is. Bad. I think I, the only part I like is the that weird like post chorus thing. The I don't know, but then it's not connected to the rest of the song. So the like I might come, I might yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, that no, that's fire. I yeah. like, like I said, there's certain parts of the song that I do like whenever I get 15 seconds into it, and I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna skip this, but. 80% of the time, I'm skipping this shit. This shit is dog shit. Yeah. It's, it's horrible. It's dumb. I feel like maybe he knew what he was doing, and he just wanted to make... I think he knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah, um, which bothers me. So if it's... we're done there... All right, mm-hmm. David, finish yourself. No, yeah, it has, for sure. David has more stinkers. Definitely. Definitely <laughs> hit me up. Uh, in the yeah. Bible, I think Okay, so... All right, I'm taking in you over now. It's not terrible. Right, Can we right now. talk David about how... Is not- I'm they not put mad at David. they put my man Givion on, on the fucking one of the worst tracks in the fucking album, and he has the best verse by far, and it takes <laughs> like four minutes to get to it. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> his 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 verse on that is good too. Like I mean, Givion is like just a, like you I, on I'm my just mind. I'm so in love with him to just to begin with. I mean, he intoxicates me, but like thank you, yes, you're, thank you. You're welcome, um, man. love love that love that album. Um, but EP it, EP, thank you. Um, <laughs> but still, like I'm, I'm so mad. I have to like, like I literally, if I ever want to hear that, we'll literally, we'll actually just skip the Giveon's part, listen to that, and then just skip the next track. Like it's, okay, I, so I, I, I have I, the the Le- chorus is like literally makes me cringe my head. That's that's not how they do it in the Bible. Like I don't, I don't know what the fuck it is. It's it's I so bad. really like that that hook honestly. It's, but I hate it. Legitimate question for you. Do you actually do exactly what you just said? Do you ever take a song and skip to a certain part, listen to it, and then go on about your day? The op, the or that's I guess, very. I guess technically the inverse is more true, where there's a single, what? there's a single verse I don't <laughs> like. There's a single verse I don't like, and so I'll listen to the track and skip the verse as opposed to skipping to a do single you look verse at, in like, a song. Look at your phone and like drag it. Until well, if you, I'm, you know I, I have, like I have later. no, no. So I've, I've never done that. I might with this, just out of spite, just because of your comments. Um, but I'm asking. I'm not. I'm no, not no, 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 no. That, that's no. That's what I'm. I'm, I'm being a dickhead about it. Uh, it's just. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fine. No, the there are certain tracks that I like most of that I have in large playlists that when they come on and a certain verse comes on, I'm like, okay, next track. But I've never done the opposite or inverse or whatever you want to call it. Of I only like yeah. a third of this. The, I only like verse. a third of this song. I'm gonna put this song in a playlist. Yeah. Skip to the third that I like, and then get rid of it as soon as I'm done with that. So I I was saying it as you know hyperbole more than anything else. Um, I but- I'm gonna shoot the song some bail. When I first heard it, I was like I was completely unimpressed. I thought it was gonna be another TCU moment where I was or TC <laughs> TCU moment where I'm like ah eh, this is a skip. Texas but Central as I University baby. It, yeah, man. But as I kept sk- as I kept listening to it, as I kept skipping it, <laughs> as I kept listening to it, I I do I do dig the fact that he sounds like he's completely wasted on the hook, and it's just like it's a different it's a different perspective for him. Like he doesn't. There's not too many times where I like I realize that he is under the influence while he's doing a track, and I actually appreciate it a little bit more because of that. And I think Dirk floats on that that, that song. I'm not gonna lie. So interesting. I don't feel any type of way about Dirk's verse, honestly. So. If there's one big takeaway, it's that it does not say that in the Bible. Yeah. I, I just one of the one of the big criticisms I have of that song is that they don't waste Giveon's verse per se, but it could have it been handled wasted, better. Dude. It yeah, that's that's fair. Imagine that, him that's having a, something soulful opinion. on like seven AM on Bridal or I, I would know, never like, want him on seven AM or fucking I don't know. I mean, what else? Yeah. Like even even Poppy's home, dude. Like, oh, Poppy's home would have been cool. But what I'm saying is, the only thing that really takes away from his verse, um, is that there's no percussion. 
like once he cuts out then mm-hmm. there's percussion that's mm-hmm. that's the only yeah. gripe i have with it but his vocals are amazing like he <clears throat> he delivers yeah. like there, there's no real takeaway from his verse other than that he sounds amazing on it really i try i know i tried desperately to love it because Gideon was on it and i you know he sounds mm-hmm. great but yeah it's probably my least favorite track on the album honestly wow okay it's it's really? up there as as bottom yeah. tier for me yeah for sure it's it's not my it's definitely not mid or top tier for me but i i don't skip it at all i like i like the beat i like yeah. the feel of it so if i if i have my phone in my hand i'll scroll to the give on verse if i don't then i'll just hit skip yeah, i'm never doing that it's a five minute track i'm skipping it if i'm doing yeah, that yeah 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 i'm skipping every time um okay so do you have any other bottom feeders uh i mean dang yeah well there's not too many man um let's see i named a few i mean there are, I mean, there are very few that i'm mad at for sure oh i guess effing fans i think is awful i think it should have been a demo like it sounds like a demo it's god awful i mean it's it's like how did how is this released <laughs> god awful granted this is one of the tracks that Bro. like because it's so tucked into like the it's a 21 song album or whatever it is so it's, it's, it's like, like so i love yeah, it's yeah. the second to last song it's so tucked away that like i only listened to it like twice dude but like, i wasn't mad at it like Trevor will show up to the podcast and hate a track and be like, yo, this is dog shit. And David will show up and be like, this sounds like a demo. This is like, this shouldn't have been released. Like the way you describe music you don't like is so fucking funny to me. I love it every time. It's so God, good. Awful. I don't know. Sometimes you just definitely not discounting your way of doing it, Trevor, by the way. It's uh, a, <laughs> it's, it's, Oh effective. yeah. No, there's, there's, there's value in completely shitting on it yeah. and then dismantling it properly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Both, both sides of the coin is, is why we have a four member podcast. That's true. Um, but David, that second, the second half of that song, if I remember, like I don't know, he he gets on a nice little little vibe. Uh, yeah, the second half is actually okay, and then it just, but I, I don't know. I think it's like I, the first half is so bad it taints the second half, and I can't I, even enjoy it. But. I need to listen to it again. Yeah, from what I, from what you're what you're saying, I need to listen to it again. So, but peace. Yes. Well, you, did you have another take? I'm sorry. No, I was gonna change it a little bit, but go ahead. I want to go to pipe the fuck down because that shit is <laughs> dog shit. Skip instantly. <laughs> and wait, shout out to my boy. I'm wearing a J. Cole song or song. I'm wearing a J. Cole shirt right now. Yeah. Um, shout out to J. Cole for repurposing this verse or this beat for Heaven's EP. If y'all mm-hmm. don't listen to if y'all haven't listened to it, go listen to it. It's great. Shout out J. Cole. Yeah. But he repurposed this beat and he did what should have been on it. This, this beat is great. And yeah. he completely just dog shits on it. Like it's one man, of my yo, how, how much how much money I gotta spend for you to pipe down, bro? Why are you fucking with these chicks that you just have to pay money to shut up, bro? Are you serious? How yeah. old are you, bro? You're th- you're almost thirty five. You're gonna be thirty five in like a month. What is wrong with you? I know that it's one of my favorite beats on the album, and and then he just is so like unavoidably toxic on it it's, it's just, <laughs> i mean drake is just toxic as hell and just, he's just like absolutely he's the he's like he's yeah the manifestation of toxic Dude, masculinity like, like yeah like he's like trevor said earlier like poppy's home is so disrespectful and fucking ridiculous as a track that's, but that's not toxic masculinity that's just him shitting on his peers that's that's totally yeah. respectful but the pipe like, down shit is completely like egregious yeah He's, you're, you're just talking to women like they're complete material it's like i mean it's yeah. just another face that you need to throw chanel at it's like i don't need this song this song shouldn't even be on this album it's fucking atrocious that's Tor- one of my personal biggest gripes with the album is i feel like drake hasn't grown up since he was like 20 and there's, a, there's like a couple things where it's like oh he has some perspective and then that's it for an hour and a half album and it it's you know that's not my cup of tea i guess but. yeah that's fair it's yeah. it, it's hard because he's like he's a mega star, right? He's like the biggest in the game right now. So it's like he has so many in order to keep that top spot, he has so many like he can't just be Cole. Well he can if he wanted to, really. But Cole will have a thirty nine minute album of just like straight bars. And mm. that's it. And he'll sell two hundred and eighty thousand first week. But in order to attain that top status, you have to uh, you have to account for so many different fan bases. So he has to serve so many different people. There's not a like he's even said this. He's never going to do just an R&B album. He's never going to do just a rap album. And the reason being is because he wants to stay on top. 
He has so many people to deliver music to, which is why you get bar-heavy tracks that no pop star could ever do, like 7 a.m., mm-hmm. and then you get shit like fucking God's Plan, where there's no bars at all, and it's just him vibing. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? For, yeah. for, for us saying, you know... He's this- the only pop star that can fucking rap his fucking ass off. Yeah. It's, yeah. We're... Mm-hmm. For every track that we we're gonna talk about, that's like you know this this track is terrible, like it doesn't resonate at all, like it, I don't know why this is on the album at all. It's gonna resonate heavily and and be the favorite track of like a couple hundred thousand people. So it's like yeah. not even not, maybe not a couple hundred thousand people, but a few a few tens of tens of thousands of people that are gonna listen to it a, a several thousand times or something like that. Like yeah. it's it the the length of the album definitely you know um lends itself to the argument of saying he could be pandering and and stuff like that of of it's it's we're gonna release every sort of niche in one big collective and therefore everyone will get what they want out of it even if they hate the other tracks um Mm -hmm. which is what we're kind of doing honestly on the other side of that niche um Mm -hmm. i mean we feel this way about about it some someone else is gonna feel the opposite um which is cool. That's the nature of the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah. it's uh, a, <laughs> it's a lot. I don't know. Uh, like he even says on Sandra's Rose back on Scorpion, like they just want a classic. That's just 10 of these of him mm-hmm. rapping on premier beats. That was one of the, that's like, that was his first collaboration with DJ premier. Yeah. Yeah. And if there were 10, 10 of those beats, you know, and him just rapping like he was on Champagne Poetry or the the, the Remorse or Seven AM. Like if you take just the rap tracks and you put it on an EP, it's fucking killer. Like there's yeah. like eight, there's like eight bar heavy tracks. Yeah, you throw in like Fair Trade mm-hmm. or something like that. But you have like Only Live Twice, all the, those tracks I just mentioned. That's a killer ass EP. Right. But then you have to account for so many different fan bases. And that's that's so just like compromise. That's just like compromise place to make art for me. That's just why I it is. Want- just, yeah it's just you know, you're you're i mean he's it's obviously sacrificing artistic whatever for commercial gain and that's you know that's why drake is the biggest like we said he just appeals to every denominator he can like everything someone everything. will like one track on here and i'll get money from it like that's just what it is but it's never going to be one of my favorite he'll i don't think he'll ever release one of my favorite albums because of that it's just not yeah. like this is my intent. This is a big statement. This is like the new thing. And you know, this is a risk. It's not going to happen. Yeah. I will say his earlier albums don't necessarily do that to the degree that the, yeah. After, after, if you're reading this is too late, that's when it started with views and more life. Those, those two are complete pandering, but everything before that, it was pretty focused. And he, he was, he was who he was. I, I will give him that. Like a lot of people shit on him. They say he doesn't have a great album. It's like, he's, he's got, very uh, a very solid discography in my humble opinion yeah and he, he was very focused even when he was doing the pop shit on take care where he was with rihanna and you know doing marvin's room and shit like that where he was doing like different things on an album but it worked so well yeah i think it's definitely a thing over time not like his whole career or anything right I think it's okay. later on yeah but okay yeah i it, but i mean it definitely yeah. is that it definitely tracks as like a you know Trevor, you said like, oh, he has to include it. It, it. it feels like more of a why not kind of a thing where it's like, this market is here. We're going to make money off of this. Why would we not include it? When why wouldn't I want to sell 600,000 copies for a week? Yeah, like yeah. the, the when gross, I can. The, why? The gross is only ever going to be helped, not hurt. Like, even the for every person you upset by saying, oh, you know, this isn't like a true work of art, he's pandering and stuff like that. There's another 10 or 20 or 50 that are like, oh, this is sick. He's including everything. So, or, or I'm going to get what I want out of this, even if I don't like everything. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't with know. The, with, the way <laughs> that it, with the way that the streaming is now, uh, longer albums are, are more appreciated for streaming numbers. It just. It's just a fact. Like you have to listen to an album. Like there's a like a, I think the benchmark is like fifteen hundred listens equals not full listens, but fifteen hundred song listens equals one album sale. So like the longer it is, the more people you're going to get listen to the entire album yeah. to say, hey, I like these tracks, or whatever, which is going to equate to more album sales. That's just the way of the climate right now. So <clears> all your favorite yeah. acts are going to be 
<laughs> releasing 20 fucking bloated ass albums for no reason. Yeah. Chris Brown is releasing 40 track albums right now, like for no reason. It's 40? ridiculous. Yeah, bro. He, li- he twice back to back. He did it with Heartbreak on a Full Moon and Indigo. He had Jesus 40 plus Christ. songs on there, Yikes. both of which got deluxe editions. Both of which are over 60 tracks of a piece. Jesus oh my Christ. god, a piece. The and I like Chris Brown's that? music. It's just insulting. It's too much. It is insulting. Is that like yeah. four or five hours? It's yes. It's more insulting when you think of when you think of it from if you just trimmed it down to ten songs. It would have been a classic album. Yeah, which is a, a, a thing you mentioned. And I do want to get into, like, the, when Drake sounds passionate and he's, like, really focused. and he, Or, like, I mean, he's focused on making good music throughout. But, like, he has these, like, you know, like, 7 a.m. on Bridal Path. He has something really to talk about. And he just... Dude, he like, fucking ate that shit. The way he responded to Kanye was the best way he could respond to Kanye, which is, like, mm-hmm. Kanye doxed him and, like, did this weak dumb stuff Dude, and yeah like, can we please talk about that bro that was fucking that was so yeah. childish man i i'm not for this beef at all i think it's beyond childish at this point but yeah. for you to leak his address and then try to play it off you're a man child yeah i did not know that know. happened that's crazy yeah, yeah, yeah he leaked his address crazy. which is why if you go back to 7 a.m there's a lyric that um that says what you know like he, it literally addresses it i'll, I'll look it up yeah that's what, I was, that's what i was gonna say he's like you know, next time, just punch that address in the, you know, give it to your driver and, like, meet. Like, that. that's the best bar you could have to respond to that. Like, just actually come to my house. Like, don't, sit, like, put me in danger by, like, leaking my yeah, freaking yeah. address. Out. Just, Get the address to your driver. Make it your destination instead of a post at a desperation. Yeah. Nice. Why the Good fuck we too. peacemaking? Why the fuck we peacemaking doing the explanations if we just going to be right in that right back in that bitch without hesitation? I'm totally honestly in this beef if we had to pick a side. I'm totally on Drake's on Drake's side. I think yeah, Kanye I mean, has been petty for fucking years. I think Con, or Drake has been petty as well, but he's more so responded to Kanye's total childish behavior over the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Kanye did just some weird you know, posting the Joker pic and then doxing Drake, and Drake actually respond with you know music. So, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which I will I will give him credit. He's up there with like Yay or not Yay. Fucking God, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> He's up there with Eminem and like and Jay, where they don't respond via Twitter, Instagram. Mm-hmm. They don't respond via interviews or podcasts. They respond with music. Say what you will about Drake. Drake will always respond with music. He is that classy. He's like Hove. He will always respond with music. Yeah, oh, it's man. never it's it's never a fucking tweet. Mm-hmm. The the response to fucking Meek Mill with the is I forget the track name, but like if that's charged up and back to back. Is that a back yeah. to back? Is that a girl? Is that your is that a world tour or your girls tour? Was with like, a fingers turn a trigger finger was, or trigger yeah, fingers turn to fingers. It was yeah. literally the biggest thing in the game for months that he released mm-hmm. that track, and that was like, oh, he destroyed fucking Meek Mill so heavily mm-hmm. and shit like yeah. that. It was, it was, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say I mean, a little. This, this, this does not. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah he did with the rap radar shit for sure. Yeah, yeah. but it was already <laughs> bars. Like at that point, it was. It he still laid it down on, on wax. It wasn't his first. It wasn't his first option. You know what I mean. Like sure. that was that was after the fact, which was a waste of an interview. Don't watch that bullshit. He is complete pandering, and he controlled that entire interview. is ridiculous. But yeah. anyway, I will say a little like more lightheartedly. Uh, I was talking about it pre in the pre pod, but I like Seven AM is a dope track. Mm. It's yeah, my bro. pet peeve when Drake says these che- cheesy Spanish lines. Man, I cannot do it. He's talking about. Listening, menudo, papi, chulo, grabbing culo, uno, dos, trace. Like, bro, what are you talking about, bro? Just well, okay, so like that. I, I totally it's agree with you. Easy, man. I no, I totally He's agree got with songs you. In Spanish, I yeah. agree with you. No, I, I totally agree with you. The only thing I don't agree with is the uno, dos, trace line because no. that shit is hard. <laughs> and the reason why, the reason why it's hard is because he released Scary Hours Two, which was a three track EP earlier this year. And it hit one, two, and three on the Billboard Hot 100. So that's why that that's why that bar is so like it, it's cool, so man. like monumental. But I, yeah. I I agree. Otherwise, it's it's pretty corny to that's to a talk yeah, that's a very cool bit of context for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's but it's like it's those out of context bars that you just won't catch unless you're like a, a super fan like myself that is just mm-hmm. wasting time. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, you won't yeah, you yeah. won't catch these little nuances unless right. you're like super invested. Mm-hmm. 
you get invested in your favorite artist and it pays off mm -hmm. like you know if it's good you know yeah <clears throat> mm -hmm. dang my freaking voice though i did want to i did want to know everybody's opinion huh it's not one of the greatest best songs on here but how do we feel about fountain i need to know fountains fountains yeah <clears throat> it's like, uh it's a one it's a one dance b-side man you're right that's what I thought when I heard it. I like yeah. I like the track. I like the track, and then I was listening to one more. I'm like, this sounds like one dance. Which it literally is a it one literally dance. Is. Yeah, it right. literally is a one dance B side. But yeah. I do enjoy it. I, I think it's a nice break from from everything that he does yeah. on the album. I'm glad that it's the one and only like Afro beat slash dance hall thing that he does on here. I, I enjoy it for what it is. I don't I like I like those those Drake type of tracks. I like when he does it. He doesn't overdo it. And yeah, and it's not like even if you don't like it, it's only three minutes. It's not; yeah. it doesn't overstay its welcome, which is mm -hmm. it's. But it's a nice great. little. It's a nice little vibe. I feel. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't. I'm not mm -hmm. mad at it at all, honestly. Dope. Is and it, it it yeah. shines on Thames, which is I, she's from Africa, and she, I know she <laughs> was on Wizkid's huge song. I think it's called Essence, which uh -huh. did a lot of numbers for her. But just to be on a a Drake track doing, you know. Yeah. what's oh, yeah. true to her culture that i think that's really cool honestly that is cool and speaking of a little bit of shine and a different on a different person who i never heard of like the yerba's heartbreak was, oh yeah uh, yeah yeah but sorry yeah lovely freaking interlude and i Absolutely. i sort of looked her up like oh she's a dope vocalist she's a dope singer yeah that ooh, that was unexpected but beautiful Man. it's a yeah there's a couple of nice moments on here that are just completely unexpected and that's why like i that's another reason why i love him so much is because he does like put so much shine on like completely unknown artists or mm. unknown art because I've, I've known about yeba before but i i listen to a lot of r&b like modern r&b so i i was aware of her mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. he yeah. just he dedicated a whole track to her like he gave he didn't even he didn't even show up on that track he named it after her <laughs> and everything you know he gives a, a lot of shine yeah, he did that on Take Care with Kendrick, right? Which is pretty cool. Yep, crazy. the Buried Alive interlude. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. Say what you will about him, man. He he gives people a, a stage to shine, so. Yeah, and other more, like, highlights that are... Have we talked about, like, what's our, what's our like, crowning tracks on this album? I was going to really, say, yeah. Yeah, push it over the edge. Yeah. It's tough, man. Every time I think about this, it's tough. Crowning tracks, like top tracks? I, yeah. I definitely like where we the get back to what... what what yeah. Trevor always calls classic Drake, like what you want to hear from Drake, which is the the maybe subtle is a bit too aggressive of a word, but not domineering, very good sort of environmental beat with Drake just flowing for bars at a time, just no chorus in between, just bars on bars on bars, which he, he, you referred to as uh, Champagne Poetry, 7 a.m., and The Remorse, which The Remorse is a great closing track, in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It's great. I like 7 a.m. a lot as well. Um, I just let, I just, I mean, Drake has such an iconic voice. Um, and for him to just sort of like enunciate and go through and, and just talk and just like inform you mm -hmm. basically is like, this is what it is. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm telling my truth kind of a thing. Um, mm -hmm. where even when it's like somewhat more facetious, like on parts of the champagne poetry and whatnot, um, it's still, it's still great. Um, and I love those Drake tracks. It's yeah, like yeah. it's quintessential Drake, yeah, where exactly. there's it's a it's a soul sample, and it's just him for five minutes, like mm -hmm. I love you, I love you, and I it has nothing to do you. with the track, but it's a Beatles sample, yeah, <laughs> which is like a flex in it of itself. But he just goes for five minutes, and it's just it's just lovely. That's the kind of shit I like from Drake, mm -hmm. which is what like. Unfortunately, we'll never get a whole album of that, you know, just because yeah. of his star power. He wants mm -hmm. to stay at the top. I totally get it. Mm -hmm. but I'll tell I you, swear, it would be one of the better albums of all time if he ever gave us like a 12 track album of just Omerta and fucking Tuscan Leather and all that shit. All those rapidy rap Drake tracks. <sighs> I will tell you, I love the type of Drake where it's just a hard beat and it's just catchy and he's just feeling himself yo probably friends the, in the industry probably the track i played the most times no friends of the industry yeah. i there were so many one, times yeah. where i when i have to take a short drive to go pick up my brother already i'm like i'm playing this song it's hard man it's just it's so hard. catchy it's just the bounce to it is crazy i love those types of 
Drake tracks, man. And he, yeah, ooh, that is Drake featuring Drake. That, that yeah. is definitely Drake, Drake featuring, featuring Drake. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Mm. I like it. The Memphis style sample with the three six mm-hmm. mafia shit is good. He was known to snap on the chat before the app. That's facts. Like, come on. This now. is like I don't know if y'all listen. I Cam, you probably listen. You did you listen to Dark Lane demo tapes? Yes. The album from last year. Oh, do you remember Landed? What which one? Do you remember Landed? No. Wrote this with the Cartier pen. Do I sound different? Maybe. You don't remember? Okay. This is basically that track, but just harder. The, oh, the track is called Landed? Yeah. Huh. It's like track eight or something like that. I'm weird for that. I don't know why I don't remember that. but Dang. There you go. Because I remember a lot of Dark Lane demo tapes. So. Chicago Freestyle is... I play that shit all the time. Uh, it was uh. right! It was track eight! Ah! <laughs> Oh, how does he, he never, do it? He never and fails. It's a. How does he do it? I want to know. How does he do it? He might be on the spectrum. I am autistic. I'm sorry. That is no knock to anyone who is artistic. Or artistic. I'm artistic. gonna stop talking. We're, wow. we're we are really out here. Yes, of course. We are Any, out here. Anyone who is differently abled, we love you, of course. Not Absolutely. Really. poetry. One hundred percent. Transitioning back to the music. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Uh, any any know. other comments? Yeah, I mean, just you know, highlights. I like knife talk. I know we uh, only knife like... talk took a second. Yeah, I, I I was I was definitely a, a critic of uh, gang shit. I was gonna say, mind. dude. I was like, gang it, shit as it, it it feels it like because I I went to the J Cole concert last night and Twenty One was on the bill, and he played that song, and I'm gonna tell you that shit hits harder. When the 808s be booming. Uh, that makes sense. I guess I don't know. It feels oh, it feels stripped really. from it feels stripped from a fucking fourteen year old SoundCloud album where it's just fourteen year old white kid who's just like, I I hate my parents. Like I know they pay for everything in my life, but gang shit, that's all I'm oh on. Like that's what it feels like to me. It feels so fucking cheesy. It's like if you were actually on gang shit, why are you fucking moaning about being on gang shit? I don't I don't know. This, it feels it feels like if I made that track basically. <laughs> this I'm track glad you didn't. Exactly. I, I'm also glad I didn't because I would never recover. Mm-hmm. Oh, I will say, another reference. I was, <laughs> I was kind of petty listening to this track myself because I was immediately jaded by uh, PP Pat. Uh, I know because oh, so hard, bro. The Fast and Furious movie, man. We watched out of that movie. Oh, He's on the track. I hate that flow. He comes on here with the same flow. That's with, that uh, flow. That's, that's, deadly. that's his flow. He got one flow. I love Come on, it. man. And I was yeah. immediately jaded. I'm Yo, like, have that same energy shit, with Rick Ross, bro. What is this shit, man? <laughs> the same energy with Rick Ross. <laughs> Rick Ross is the same flow for eight years, and we and love it. 21 did the flow, too. Huh? Oh, man. Man. Big oh, brain yeah. can kill. Uh, nah, nah, bro. You got you got other ideas? I don't know what the fuck he's talking same about, bro. Same over and over again. It's I heard not. two tracks, but I've heard the same track. It's not. P.P. Pat. <laughs> P.P. Pat. Yo, you you're mad disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, man. Get on the hype train. That's so for funny. Three, six. This is 3-6 so six Mafia. This is like old school shit. Mm-mm-mm. Yep. Mm-mm-mm. No, he, he, is, he, he delivered on that shit. I'm not going to lie. But... I don't know, man. There's some, there's something with uh, Metro that sometimes I don't. He's either really on or really off for me, mm. and I, I don't particularly enjoy this beat. It's very, uh, it's very ominous. Very. He loves the uh, 808 heavy, um, ominous piano loop where he just, he yeah. just finds this lovely piano sample or he'll play a piano loop and. And then he'll just throw these mean ass eight oh eights and it works sometimes and it doesn't work for others. Yeah. Yeah. I love the beat, but I get it. It has some weird aspects to it. Like I don't think the drums are loud enough, but I love the sound. No, yeah, it's not it's not loud enough in general. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Um I don't know. You know, I'm talking know. about favorite tracks. I That's don't know. Cool. We're good. Yeah. It's cool. I, yeah. I, I do we wanna then hop into rating both of them? Well, fun. I just want to go oh, yeah. on on I just want to say fair trade 
is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, definitely it, hop on more tracks if we want to. I didn't know if we were done or not. It's, no, fair trade is great. Yeah. It's probably the. I don't know. It's it's my standout. It's easily the most pl replayable track on there, and he actually, um, I think he put this on his IG story like months before the album came out of just like a thirty second like loot or not loot, but like a leak of him just in the studio um recording his engineer just playing in the background and it was a great song and i was like all right i'm looking forward to this track and it was great like travis kind of mumbles for the first like eight bars or whatever <laughs> and then it finally gets going yeah and there's a point where it's like the 808s aren't present the entire beat it's like it, it's got a nice kick for the most part and then it, it'll cut in these super hard like bouncy 808s for like four bars and then it'll cut out and it'll bring it back again and I look forward to it every time it comes back. But it's like it's definitely the most replayable song on here for me. Yeah, it's a standout for me. It's really catchy and like, you know, I got some good bars and just sounds nice. Yeah. How do we yeah. feel about Way Too Sexy? Oh, wow. It hurts. It's whack. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, 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 I've been, I don't know. It, I like Future's verse. That's it grinds okay. my ears. You like Future's verse? <laughs> Okay. Well, I like. Yeah, no. I like how he comes. Too I don't sexy like, to go. I don't like. I don't feel comfortable. Future telling me he's too sexy for no, his chain. Okay, for the I don't crab. like that part. I don't like that part. I just like how he comes in. Yeah. I love I, this song. Oh my I know. god! I know you do. I love it, man. I hated this dude, David. Fucking vouch for me. I loved this track when it first came out. I fucking yeah. hated it. I think you said you were never listening to it again. The first, the first I would never time listen to it again, and that it was the worst Drake song he's ever released. Oh my lord! <laughs> and then I listened, to, or then I watched the music video, mm -hmm. and it saved it. The music video is funny. It didn't save the shit. music video is <laughs> fucking awesome. It is awesome. He oh there's a point where he's like on the street, and there's a fan blowing at him, and he's dancing like Michael Jackson, and fucking he has Kawhi Leonard dancing with him. It was, it was dope. It's, I get, I, I get you. I like the music video. It's funny, but it's like he's he's overweight walking on a beach, going, okay, that's fine. I don't <laughs> I know right. he's doing okay. that, but Drake <laughs> being funny and self aware is like, but he also believes this about himself. So how funny is it? Like, yeah, he thinks he's. <laughs> how do you think man. that he believes it? I mean, that's Drake. He's a fuck boy. Like everyone, like obviously, he's a fuck boy. But I, I don't <laughs> necessarily point the fact that he believes that he's way too sexy to go out in public. I think they. Are, I think him and Young. I don't Thug. think he's got I don't million think dollar outfits. Felt that way at all. Huh? He'd be wearing million, million dollar outfits. He definitely feels too sexy. Yeah, I think he thinks he is like the hottest man who's ever lived. I don't think he thinks that I mean, at all, David. I mean, if you could pull any girl on the planet, it's gonna be hard to not feel that way. Right. Basically, yeah. like I don't, that's fair. Like I don't know that. Yeah, I don't. I don't begrudge him for it. It's just I don't want to hear a song about that. That's yeah. all. I love this song. I think it's great. Uh, I'll tell you what song I also did love. We didn't talk about the Kid mm -hmm. Cudi feature. Yes, that's a good, that's a good song. Yes. A dope yes. song. A yes. dope. I miss you song. too. Yes. Yeah. No, I I'm on record saying I don't like Cudi. I I can't fuck with his music like is nearly at all. <laughs> that's fine. I'll t I'll take the I'll take the L. Y'all want to give me an L? I'll take the L, man. I'm sorry. But he, kills he kills this shit. He kills this shit. Yeah, they both. It's a very solid so, one. Because I, because when I heard it, I'm like, I like, I like Cuddy. I don't. I'm not like a huge Cuddy fan. I'm not into like all his. But what I've heard, I like him. Mm. And I heard this track, and I'm like, yeah, this is this is another dope Cuddy track. And then uh, I'm like, I wonder how Trevor feels about it because I know he doesn't like it. But I'm glad to hear he likes. It. No, this this song is great, especially on the highway at night. This is one of those vibes. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's high tier on on the album for me. I, it's a it's a very solid um, sort of feeling vibe, if you will. I can make ten dollars sure. a lot, lot. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Cuddy. We talk about. Whoa, I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. people talk about Cuddy hums and how they're you know religion in and of themselves and everything. His <laughs> the hums and the vo his voice are uh, are delightful um, in any for respect, sure. no matter what. And so. You know, you pair that with a good beat and a good, good topic, kind of a kind of a thing, makes you feel something. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
I I think the only thing that I wanted to talk about le- uh, left was the Love All J verse. I I was like taken aback when I first heard it because it's like so incredibly. Not only is it aggressive and violent, but it's also laid back at the same time. It's 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 such a weird juxtaposition where he's talking about someone like putting a hit on him and like wanting to kill him, but. I don't know. It just it just makes me respect Jay so much more just to hear him talk about this kind of shit. Like that verse is is unbelievable. Like he's like, we only respect violence. Anything less than that, we play in violins. And then like yeah. the whole the last bar, he I even said this to David when I first heard it. I was like, he knew that bar was so hard that he reap like he repeated it again. Like you know the you know the price of everything, but the value of nothing. Yeah, and then he repeats the bar. Mm-hmm. That is that's a bar for the ages. Prices of everything, value of nothing, hits fucking hard. Yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable. That that verse was crazy. Crazy. And the way that it the way that it fucking starts with it's previously on Ready to Die, and it goes to this hard ass lovely sample into this beat. It's like ah, oh, it takes me to another world. This song is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jay Z man, will we get another album? I, th- I feel like Jay-Z is so it. good that, I mean, I'm glad you love this verse. It's like B-tier Jay-Z for me. I still think it's great, but, like, he's just so amazing that, like, this is just what he does to me, so. Yeah. No, this is a different, this makes is a different Jay for me. Effortless, man. man. No, yeah. for sure. This is a different Jay for me, though. He, I don't think he's ever t- tackled this subject. This, like, like, level-headed and, like, just open-minded and so like just upfront yep. about it like <laughs> you don't want me to be cool with these dudes they try to end my life like <laughs> he's just like addressing i don't know what happened honestly i don't know the background of this verse maybe it's just fictional or whatever but god mm. damn it it makes me feel away yeah For nice sure. all right i don't, I don't have too much else about this album yeah how do we we wrap up i don't know if there's oh, any other weird comparisons we want to try to make but you know pretty much wrapping up our thoughts on the albums uh, yeah I, I think i got everything out yeah two hours in this is our first two hour episode in quite a long time I'm yeah sure. i mean fitting considering it's a couple very long albums um they were you know sitting down i, I mean this this uh, episode is so long out from the albums themselves because of the fact that they are so long and tackling them and actually like with life being busy and insane and everything you know Mm -hmm. sitting down to do the podcast homework was was something else um especially when i went in with certain expectations i wanted to treat um because i do like and count you know uh kanye albums in some of my favorites um but i'm aware that i don't like more of his more recent work I wanted to treat it more of like a work of art, like go into it without bias and try to experience it that way. But it, you know, still didn't hit that hard for me. And with Drake, I, I figured, you know, it'll, it'll be likely more of the same, more of the same, like, um, general audience, poppy type stuff. And, uh, and you know, we got, like we said earlier, a few, a good few of those tracks where he's just on that sort of background beat where he gets the bar out the entire time. Um, that's what Trevor calls quintessential Drake, which I, he and I are both in love with. Um, and so I, I, I guess on both fronts, I really kind of got what I expected. Um, and I don't know if yeah. I, you got, or should I jump into my rating right now with that? Spiel yeah, go ahead. Being yeah, said. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to call Donda a three. I'm going to have you repeat it, that real quick. Did Donda. I, did I, Donda. Donda. Yeah. I said Donda. Yeah. Okay. Donda. Um, I love you. I'm going to call. Yeah. 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 No, you're right to correct me. Um, I'm going to call Donda a three. Um, it's, uh, wow. it's solidly below average for me. Um, there's, I don't think it track on there that I'm going to add to a playlist. Um, mm. Jesus Lord was cool as an experience in and of itself. That's what I talk about it in terms of going to it as an art project, as opposed to mm-hmm. um, generally listenable, enjoyable, everyday music. Um, um, Moon is cool too. It has that kind of ethereal thing. And like I said before with the, uh, the one bit with the 
I think it was the with the weekend. I'm looking at the wrong piece of paper, but um, yeah, that was, that was Don Tolliver and Kid Cudi. Um, yeah, yeah, and then Don Tolliver and Kid Cudi, and then Hurricane, the Father Hold Me Close, Don't Let Me Drown, um, is like a, but like that's like a very standout moment on a otherwise like only decent track to me. Um, so it, it was it was either mid or less um, for both most the vast majority degrees. of the tracks in the album. So. We call, it out for me. <laughs> we call we call that a three. Um for certified lover boy, I'm gonna hit it with a six and a half that will probably go up. Um like I like we said before, it's it's a lot of what we've already heard from Drake. Um a lot of stuff that is largely forgettable because it's a sort of expansion of the audience trying to make sure we include everybody and get every little number that we possibly can because it doesn't necessarily take away from numbers to include that stuff, but it definitely does add to them, as we discussed in depth earlier. Um so but that in all in all, in terms of putting a solid number on it takes away from the quality of album of the album itself. So um I think that'll go up the more I listen to it and the more I really try to fall in love with uh, certain tracks and ignore the rest of them. And that'll probably bring it up to a seven, seven and a half at most. I think um, I don't see it going really eight or above, um, but yeah, six and a half right now for certified and uh, three for Donda. Donda. <clears throat> we didn't talk about, uh, but I'm glad you, I'm glad you gave it the rating. I'm sorry. I no, just looked at the track list. We didn't talk about Race My Mind. I just wanted to give a, a quick shout out to that song because I, I really enjoy that song. Huh. And it kind of channels Take Care Drake in a way that he hasn't done in a while where he sings the first two and a half minutes and he gives like a, a nice little um, toxic masculinity, how you would say, uh, verse at the very end. And it kind of built like the beat builds up to this wonderful synth like climax that I, I really enjoy. I'm sorry. Not to, yes. not, not to I want to. Uh, I, like, I like that track a lot. As you're saying that, another closing thought for for the Kanye album um, just kind of hit me that it was, I I rate it as I do because it wasn't, it just wasn't inspiring or or didn't hook me or anything. It was like decently produced and everything, and it it nothing necessarily offended me to any degree or or made me like want to turn it off or skip it very immediately. But I just wasn't entertained. It just it, it right. didn't it mm-hmm. didn't feel like anything that I would ever. Mm-hmm want to return to as as like this is a valuable way to spend my time you know that's cool i mean you just feel like out of all the kanye albums this is you know one of them yeah it's hard it's hard man because you know he's got so many classics it's like Mm -hmm. you know he's he's a totally different person so you know it's it's hard to keep your expectations and going into it to to get exactly (laughs) what you wanted out of it so yeah just just within kanye let alone music in general you not even not even yeah not even comparing it to drake at all you just you'd have a you'd have a hard time convincing me to listen to stuff off of this other than other Kanye songs yeah let alone other music in general so right it's tough Mm. right yeah i'm very curious to hear your guys david give me it sure well daddy um I guess, let me think. Yeah, I, I kind of got what I expected from both of them. Um, I mean, honestly, you know, late, you know, late stage Kanye, like, I think Jesus is King is fine as well. I think Ye is okay. Um, and so I don't, I've never hated a Kanye album per se, but he's obviously dropped in quality and that's, you know, what I got here. Um, Drake, you know, didn't give me anything new. Um, I feel like I've heard all these songs before. Um, so... I guess I, I kind of respect what Kanye artistically is doing, even though, you know, what he's doing <laughs> as and the, the hoopla, the sideline stuff is, is okay. so hard to respect nowadays. He's just doing all this crazy, like not to not t- to talk about mental health, not like crazy in that way, but just the stuff that is hurting other people like objectively. Um, so, you know, that's always in my mind when I'm thinking of this stuff. But anyway, off of that note, if you don't count the freaking jail part two the baby verse um which is the which worst we didn't verse even the, get to the worst verse of the year insulting we didn't, we didn't even get to yeah <laughs> the baby thinks you're all idiots if you buy into that verse um but the, ba- oh, the baby is a bigoted idiot yeah um i never liked him there you go he, was he had track. great music before that let's <laughs> just put it that way drake said it whack rappers doing weak features for a pop artist <laughs> they pop yeah. now so if we're able to cut off the part twos, then I I 
I like Donda a decent amount because I think it has, you know, some really great standouts. It has higher highs than Certified Lover Boy for me. Um, so I, I can give it a six for that. Um, you know, not anything great. Uh, a lot of lows, very messy, very bloated, like clearly. But, you know, certain things that I can actually think on and, and sort of can touch me and, and are, are something I haven't heard before, maybe. Um, yeah, Certified Lover Boy, you know, whatever. Uh, got a certain amount of tracks I can take from it, but it's just like another Drake project. Um, nothing interesting there. Um, again, he doesn't. He has the emotional maturity of like a high school like student, um, and that just his toxic like lyrics are just not what I'm into. I don't know why I would listen to that. Um, I give it like a five though, because it still has you know quite a few good tracks. It's it's kind of like the definition of average. It's like it's there. It makes money. It's not all that inspired or new or interesting, but it's there. So mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. All right. Alex, hit me with that shit, Big Daddy boy. Big Daddy what. Kane. Big Daddy Kane, hey. But I will say, you know, Kanye for me is just on another level as a of rapper shit. and a. I mean, he's a producer. You got to give it to him. You know, I mean, it's all him. So I mean. There's not much. I mean, there's people. I mean, there's people who produce and rap for sure, but not much doing it like Kanye. And I mean, so for me, he's just held to a higher standard. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have a certain expectation when Kanye comes out with projects. I haven't genuinely been hyped for a Kanye project in a while, unfortunately. Agreed. But, yeah. Uh, that's just the way. That's just the way the news goes. Mm-hmm. But. Um, <laughs> Donda, yeah. Very bloated. I can't say, like like I said, at the highest standard, I would expect more, but I can't really expect it from what Kanye's been giving us. So it's not like my expectations were let down because I didn't have a whole lot to begin with. I There are tracks that I vibe with, for sure. Uh, there A lot of them are entirely too long, and what we talked about, you know, the repetitive loops instead of these musical ideas combined into these tracks uh for me it's a 3.5 uh i feel comfortable putting it there with everything else certified lover boy man uh there's definitely a lot i'm gonna come back to uh, you know that cutty that cutty track i'm coming to the uh little wayne track i'm coming back to mm. no friends in the industries of bob wayne fucking ate that shit bro it's a good win verse for sure. Yeah. Uh, pull my hammer out of pussy, pulling nails out my back. Ah. <laughs> Although when he starts talking about fetus, I'm like, ah, I, don't know fetus. <laughs> yeah. the eight ball, I don't know. God damn. Uh, I'm giving Drake's. Uh, I'm giving CLB a six. It's not by any means Drake's best project, but I still enjoy it, uh, and you still can too. So that's why I'm putting my ratings. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, it's all, all right, me, so. I guess. Um, there's not too much I gotta say because these boys kind of, you know, summarized my my thoughts on it. Tens uh, for one both. way or another. Tens for both. That's absolutely ten minus seven for uh, Mr. Donda, for <laughs> Mr. Kanye. Hey, we're I'm gonna I'm I'm steal. Yeah, I'm gonna steal your your score. I'm gonna give this shit a three. Um, mm. there, there's a lot on here that is beyond forgettable. I will never listen to again. Yeah, uh, but there are certain tracks on here that I really enjoy that I'll definitely come back to more often than not. But like we've been saying, man, uh, Kanye has such a high bar for him for great albums that yeah. you, you releasing a 27 track album is never going to be a 12 track monster like My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy or even a 20 track monster like College Dropout. You know, it's never going to beat it. Yeah. And if I'm being fair, I can only compare you to you and you've fallen off for the past five years. So that's just, that's just what it is, man. You're, you're in another space. You're doing different things. You're focused on your Adidas deal. You're focused on your real estate game. I totally feel it, but the music is lacking. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give that shit a three. Uh, as far as Drake is concerned, the first listen was uh, definitely a mixed bag. I'm, I'll say that as a as a certified Drake stan. Oh, um, <laughs> um, 
I, I thoroughly enjoy this man's music. If I'm being totally upfront with you guys, I I love him to death. I I think he's he's got one of the more strong discographies uh, in the game, and he continues to put out great music, in my humble opinion. Um, but Certified Lover Boy did grow on me. There's a there's like three tracks on here that are certified skips, uh, <laughs> for sure. But other than that, I, I'm gonna give it a seven. I'm gonna give it a solid seven. I cool. I, I love it. I think a lot of the, like how David was saying, Donda has higher highs. I think uh, CLB has higher highs for me by far. I'd agree with that, yeah. It's it's got a lot more replayability. A lot more quotables. Drake is the quotable king. (laughs) This is all there is to Um, it. Beneath your pictures is some of my my all-time quotes. Yeah, man, he's self-aware, man. He knows. Yeah. It's like people have been using Drake's lyrics for IG captions for a fucking decade. It's like for, for him sure. to, for him to finally lay that up was was nice. Oh yeah. So, I'm going to give it a 7. It's uh it's definitely not up up top there with, you know, take care and and if you're reading this and nothing was the same, it's, it's definitely not a a classic, but it's it's damn good. So, that's all I got to say. Yeah. Dope. Wow. That they is a it. Very and that's long... coming from a guy that loves Kanye. I'm gonna put that out there. I love Kanye to death. Yeah, yeah these, no, these, la- these last few albums have, have not been it for me. I think we, we all, both, I think all four yeah. of us have a solid amount of love for at least certain parts of the discography of both artists. So, oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and we're graduation is one of the best rap albums ever created. Yeah. Period. I got a, yeah, I got a couple of Kanye albums I could put up there yeah. for sure, without yeah. a doubt. And I and I've listened to like four other Drake albums, so I'm not like you know, whatever. I'm not a Drake hater either. I just you know. Yeah, definitely. And, and it's it's rough. Like maybe that Donda score would change. It's it's there's a lot of feelings going into these albums and expectations that we talked about. Like you know, what do you like more? Is it like, I feel like there are these high highs, but Donda's obviously way more messy and Turf yeah. Lover Boy more put together. But yeah. maybe it's less interesting. But for me, obviously, but you know. Yeah. It's an interesting dichotomy, I guess. Uh, no, it's fair. It's, there's yeah. fair criticisms to be had across the board. Neither albums are perfect by any means. And if <laughs> anyone that is saying that is just delusional on either end, yeah. they both have fair criticisms to be taken. Yeah, into account. To, to give it a 10 is to not actually listen to the album. You, um, Yeah, you would you would be completely delusional to give either of these yeah. a perfect score. Yeah, that's that's true. Or a 9 or an 8, if I'm being honest. With. Dang. Yeah. Well, there you have it, guys. Yeah, that's our thoughts and our perspective. It's here. The episode is finally here, and we lit. And we'll be coming with another episode at some point. So just, you know, when it happens, it happens. So thanks for staying tuned if you have. And we love to, I mean, shoot, even if you get a toxic comment, we'll have fun with it. Or if you, but a non toxic comment would add more to the discussion and the conversation. So we would appreciate that greatly. So, for sure. Uh, like, if, you, if y'all give us a toxic comment, I'm going to screenshot it. We're going to have some fun in the DMs <laughs> and then we're going to shit on you publicly. So it's yep. just, that's how it is, man. Yeah. Yep, I got the, we're putting on the gloves. Yeah. So yeah. just come prepared, man. Uh huh. Indeed. So, with that being said, it's been real, everybody. Thank you and take care of yourselves for sure. Ooh. Not a, not trying to be a bar, but I knew it was love gonna, it. No, I love I it. It's gonna happen. <laughs> take care. I'd be saying take care to everyone, honestly. That's, that's like my that's my that's my goodbye. Like take care, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alex, give me the give me the fucking Alejandro, Alejandro. Oh. Well, you do have it. Ale, yeah, you ale, do ale, have ale, it. Alejandro. You, know, you got. <laughs> fresh lineup we, we'll, we'll figure it out we'll figure it out the next few episodes but we're we're here for it you're here for it if you're listening to this point so shout out to you uh yep yeah, like like david said you know give us a comment how you feel about these albums you know what do you don't like what you don't like what oh that, those were words <laughs> what do you like what don't you like you know what songs are your bangers did you love it did you hate it what would you rate it yeah mm-hmm. What songs do you think were garbage, you know? And we'll have some fun. Uh, I love you all for listening. And I, I was going to say peace out, but that's not my thing. So. <laughs> See, I'm my mojo. You can, tell, you can tell it's been a minute since we hit an episode. <laughs> right. What's your What's your thing, Alex? Say it. I don't know. It's, it's he, already just, he already said it. He already said I love okay, you all. Okay, okay. Gotcha. All right. We love you all. <laughs> yeah. Uh,
like Alex said, um, not that it matters because we're fucking demonetized. Thank you very much, Alex. But uh, if you want to go give us those uh, five star reviews on Apple Podcasts, uh, if you're here to this point after over two hours of this, then you have absolutely no excuse not to. Um, let us know. We would love to interact with you. If you're if you're that type of fan, that's you're our you're what we want in our lives. So uh, definitely interact. You with are us. our us bread and butter. Reviews. We will uh we'll read it out for you. So, um, yeah, that uh, YouTube comments, likes, dislikes, all that good stuff. If you're watching on YouTube and whatnot, the socials are at Unboxing Life Pod for Instagram and Twitter. We got at Unboxing Life Podcast for the TikTok that we've been more active on recently. Uh, R slash Unboxing Life Podcast, of course, as well for uh for podcast uh, episode posts and memes and whatever we want to get going on there. Um. But yeah, all that good stuff. You know, come interact with us. We love the feedback. Every ounce of feedback we get, we interact with wholeheartedly, all four of us, and even more. Um, some of the some of the close friends of the pod will even hit you back. So, um, you know, let us know. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you thought. Let us know what you will think. All those all those good things. And uh, as you're doing that, and forever and always, be kind to each other and stay safe, everyone. Hell yeah, man! I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. If you're out in these Twitter streets, bars, keep it keep it civil. Don't don't shit on people, man. It's ridiculous. I, I think a lot of people are picking sides for absolutely no reason. I think it's cool if you like both albums. I think you're actually even cooler if you do like both albums, because you're able to be that's true more objective about things. You know, they're, they both have uh, strengths and weaknesses. Like I said, you'd be delusional to say that both of these are perfect without any uh, mistakes thrown at them. Um, it's just the climate of, of uh, music nowadays is to just release bloated albums that aren't edited down. And that's just the, that's just the say of the game. But be kind to each other, you know. Don't, don't really take these opinions to heart and, you know, try to have a simple conversation. But obviously that won't happen. It's the internet. So take it with a grain of salt. And Cam is uh, signaling that I should shut the fuck up with his heart. No, that's so. not what I'm doing. I'm just holding this until you finish. You can take your time. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, put a, a heart in my, my non-existent hairline. <laughs> <and> say, <laughs> Peace the out. Fake.